Okay, so day two of research output, engagement and impact. Alright, so before we start, a recap. What have you learned yesterday? So since um yep, uh, most of you have joined us uh, yesterday, right? So um well uh, can I have like anyone volunteer? Can you please unmute yourself? What have you learned yesterday? The three hours that we spent together uh, yesterday morning. Anyone wants to start first? It's nine in the morning. So uh, come on people, let's be more energetic. Hello, good morning everyone. Morning, Dr. Aga. Hi. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, we learned quite a lot yesterday. <laughs> uh, well, man, you can share learned. one or two and then we will uh, give uh, chances to every, uh, others as well. Okay, uh, graphical abstract and also how to write a short summary for our like CV or to introduce us. Mm, all okay. Portal. Yeah. All right. That's okay. for me. Thank you, Dr. Aga. No Anyone problem. else? I'm treating everyone as like peers and friends, uh, so I'll try to avoid calling uh, names. So volunteer please, anyone would like to volunteer? If not, I will, I will scroll through um, and then perhaps like call one or two that familiar fest, uh, names that I saw yesterday, who joined yesterday. Hello? Anyone wants to try? Okay, uh, never mind. Next, um, Hussein. Hussein, are you there? Hello, Hussein. Hi, doctor. Hi. All right. So, would you like to share like what have you learned yesterday? Sorry, I, I'm, I'm driving. Oh, yeah, <laughs> driving. Really Sorry. All right. Okay, never mind. I'll move on to the next one. Uh, okay. Well, uh, let me check on the attendance. I'll be very um, fair. So I will just only call those who joined yesterday um, and be fair to those who joined today, like uh, Prof. Noran, uh, Dr. Sheena. Who else? Who else? Okay. okay Azura, sorry. do you want to see? Yeah? Wong here. Hi, Wong. Uh, All yeah. right, Wong. Okay, ah, nice. about, yeah, you joined uh, yesterday, you right? Okay. Mm -hmm. We learned about what is Pablon, and okay. then we learned about Orchid. All right. And also, we learned how to match our article hmm. by putting in our abstract to the journal master list uh, by using the function of match in order uh, yes, to. Yes, that uh, will be end not. And not match. And uh, that uh, is, yeah. Match. Uh, where so I, to I submit your paper? Yes. Where to submit your paper? Okay. Yeah. So thank yeah. you, thank you uh, very much uh, for your response. Okay. So like what I mentioned yesterday before we end the session uh, on uh, for day one today there will be three major topics that we'll be covering under the research output engagement and impact uh, training. So um, the first one, communicating research. All right, communicating research. I think most of you uh, joined um, this because of the words, uh, the, the tagline which I put down there, uh, getting the words out. So how do you, how are you going to communicate your research? What's how to, you know, like um, the research outreach, how to uh, spread the news, uh, spread the um, message around so that people know about your research and people know about the findings and start, you know, maybe um, citing you uh, for paper, publication, or even like uh, maybe um, use or uh, the usage of your findings, that would be something even more useful, right? Even more impactful for yourself. Okay, so as usual, because um, for uh, the training that I will conduct, uh, usually I will be like um, getting very uh, engaged with um, all of you. So we will have activities. Um, use the SAM event code, go to Slido, type in the code 62973, all right? So uh, I'll start to share, okay, let me go to the 
web version of uh, Slido. So this is a real life, okay, right. This will be a real life of your result on Slido. Then I, I can monitor uh, how's your response. So example of outputs, channels, activities for communicating research. Any word, so you can just put like one word, two words, or even like a uh, short phrase, anything you can think of. When we talk about like what's output, what's the output of your research? Or what are the activities that you can use uh, to communicate research? Or even like channels. Channels will be like some platform example, research yet. Okay, great. More, more. We want to build um, you know, like a word cloud here. Social media, LinkedIn, what else? All right, newspaper. Conference, okay, okay. All right, continue people, continue. Blogs, example of output, don't forget. Your main KPI as a researcher. What's that? Newsletter? I haven't seen the main KPI yet. Yes, publications, finally. Okay, so where are the channels that ISI, right? This is very funny with an exclamation mark there. ISI papers, okay. So what else? Or okay, okay. Channels for communicating. More things? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interviews. We have only seven of you uh, responding, but my list here, right? Uh, we have more than 19, 18 participants. So how about the rest? Google Scholar, yep. Campaigns, okay. Now I'm seeing like um, some other activities than the uh, usual way. Okay, research seminar, yes. Yep, the examples are building up. Mm, this is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Let's target like, uh, Oh, if possible, we can put in more things so that the word cloud is very nice. Then you can just screenshot from, um, from Teams. This will be part of um, your output, your engagement in the training. AS review, oh, as reviewer, all right, reviewer. Mm -hmm. Okay, Facebook interviews, all right, seminars, webinars. Mm -hmm. Anything else? What other things that you can think of um, for the channel? TikTok, yeah, finally. Okay, so whoever is uh, giving the example of TikTok, I guess um, you are very up to date. And also perhaps like you know, very well versed in uh, in all this um, social media, mm -hmm. journal club. All right, last one minute, last minute. Anything else, anything else that you can think of? Counting down, collaborate with industry, all right? Activities for communicating research. So, if you can think of industry, how about uh, uh, who's your audience for doing campaigns? So, what's the channel that you can think of? Posters, yep. Newsletter, Science Cafe, mm, nice. All right, anything else that is not here? Do I see any like okay interviews? Yes. Uh, YouTube. No YouTuber here. 
Twitter. Okay. All right. So I think that's that is enough. Um, we have quite a number of uh, examples of outputs, channels, activities uh, for communicating research. So yeah, you are making my uh, task today even easier, right? Every no everybody knows like um, we are on the same channel, we are on the same track of um, what the topic for this morning is all about. Okay, thank you everyone for your um, very keen participation and also your engagement. So, okay, I will stop for this presentation, uh, the live. Okay. All right, so let's go back to our slide. Okay. All right, so you have all the examples there. I should just screenshot and put it um, as an example for the, the feedback from you. All right, thank you. And moving on, okay, knowledge communication. So all of you are researchers, all of you are, um, you have your PhD, you have already start uh, doing your lecturing and so forth. And you are actually communicating knowledge to the students, to the students, to the public, to um, everyone, you know, like uh, how you are going to uh, disseminate the knowledge around, all right? So knowledge communication, there, there are actually like around four stages of knowledge communication, okay? First is information intermediary. So what, what is information intermediary? Uh, it, the information intermediary is actually just to make the information available. So you put your research results into the public domain without any um, further communication, which means that once you have published your paper, what you do is you put it in ResearchGet, you put it in uh, LinkedIn or um, your academia or any, any places, or UM expert, okay? Or you put it in UM expert and you leave it there. So what, what you have done, you are actually a information, uh, you are called an information intermediary. What does it mean here is that you, you, are, you are the um, middle person between the information and uh, whoever potential users out there as um, to disseminate, as you just put it available, okay? So the next stage, from information intermediary, moving on to knowledge translator. The difference between knowledge translator and information intermediary is that knowledge translator will translate the research evidence for non-specialist audiences. So what you can do, you will give uh, seminars, you write policy briefs, and um, you do some campaign to translate whatever findings you have from the research, from the publication, so uh, into, um, into something layman, something that public or anyone who are not your peer can understand. So in this process, you are translating the knowledge. Okay? You make it easier to understand. So more people will know about um, the information or the findings that you have, you have conducted through your research. Okay? And then further, one more step you know, uh, going up is a knowledge broker. So what's the knowledge broker? Knowledge broker is that you actively engage in policy and practice uh, debates, taking part in meetings, matchmaking, convening, and networking. So the knowledge broker and knowledge translator, knowledge translator is just translating the research evidence for non-specialist audiences. So if um, from the research communication, you know, like communication, uh, communicating signs, most of us will do this information intermediary. We put it, uh, put our publication elsewhere. All right, or um, you just like the research results. Maybe through um, you write, um, how, um, you just put it in uh, SSRN. All those domains or all those uh, repositories out there. Okay, you make it uh, available. And uh, some of us, I'm not sure what's the percentage, but some of us will do the knowledge translating. The knowledge translating, perhaps you will be writing uh, in a layman essay about your research findings in some magazine, science magazine, or you will go for interview. So um, when you are interviewed by radio, by TV station, 
um, by, you know, like as a panel for forum or etc. Um, to a non-specialist, um, those who are not in your field, those who are out of your field, the public, um, and also everyone. So you are translating knowledge. So most of the researchers uh, nowadays, we are at this level, information intermediary and also knowledge translator. But if you are able to move upwards to knowledge broker, you will be engaging actively in policy and practice uh, debates. So what does it mean? Um, some of uh, the researchers in UM, in UM particularly, we have uh, very prominent researchers who um, with their research findings, they actually can influence the policy makers. Okay, what does it mean here is that the, poli uh, the findings um, will be used in the policies, the national policies or the guideline or even like any uh, act and so forth. And um, these researchers, this group of uh, knowledge brokers are invited to debate in the parliament uh, to talk about, you know, like, to explain further to the ministry about the, the findings. Okay, so for example, uh, we can, I can quote some example um, who are our researchers, our professors who are knowledge broker. Uh, from Faculty of um, Econs, we have Prof Terence. Anyone from Faculty of Econs here? Uh, okay, so I'm not sure if any one of you from Faculty of Econs, but uh, Prof Terence is a knowledge broker. So um, even like, okay, maybe... Um, we have our uh, professor, uh, Professor Diraja, Prof Raja Rasya, uh, a well-known figure in UF. So um, yes, uh, Prof Raja is uh, one knowledge broker. A lot of his um, research findings and so forth is being used not only in Malaysia in uh, the policy making for Malaysian, but also being used worldwide. So uh, Prof Raja in this, um, he's a very prominent figure um, in the field of economics, of um, anything to do with not just economics and business and so forth, uh, but um, he's very well known. Okay, so that's a knowledge broker. And finally, the innovation broker. So this, you are going to be influencing the wider context to reduce transaction costs and enable innovation. Okay, so building local capacity change incentive structures to use research. So this is uh, co-producing knowledge, okay? A linear dissemination of knowledge from producer to all the way to user. So at this stage, knowledge broker, the knowledge is being used in, um, still on paper, it's a policy and practice and, uh, and debates and parliaments and so forth. But innovation broker is that your knowledge Okay, you can file a pattern and so forth, and it's being taken, it's being used by uh, innovators to invent into a prototype, uh, some products. Okay, and um, through this innovation, um, there is like building local, cap uh, the capacity building, okay, human capacity, uh, perhaps um, by hiring more people okay, to, do, to um, do the prototyping, to do the uh, mass production of um, whatever uh, products that has, has actually come out from the uh, research that you have done in the lab. All right. So um, this is a linear model, a linear framework of knowledge communication. It's very straightforward, just the different categories of what is information intermediary, what is a knowledge translator, a knowledge broker, and finally an innovation broker. So I uh, hope that one day all of you here, our young researchers from UM, all of you will move from information intermediary and knowledge translator all the way to innovation broker and or even like knowledge broker, knowledge no broker and innovation broker. So we want you to move to the broker category. All right. Okay. Moving on. Okay. So knowledge broker. What is uh, knowledge broker? Like what I mentioned earlier. Science policy communication. Okay, you transfer uh, knowledge exchange, knowledge translation, sharing, interaction, intermediation, um, mobilization, and so forth. So knowledge broker strategies. What can you do for um, as a knowledge broker? The final one, remember just now, earlier the slide, 
final one is an innovation broker. So uh, at the stage of stage three, knowledge broker, what can you do? So these are the knowledge bank. Okay, this is where okay. All, with all this is the stage one and stage two of um, knowledge communication. Okay, but a knowledge broker will do all this to translate it to move um, the knowledge further. Okay, so knowledge broker strategies you inform you do as become a consultant, match make, engage, collaborate, build capacity. Okay, so you will be collaborating with stakeholders, companies partner organization, other universities, and public, uh, not just institution, but general public, general citizens. Okay, so that is like, at least you can move up to uh, stage three of the knowledge communication as knowledge broker, the knowledge brokerage um, strategies uh, by doing all this. Okay, it's very simple, inform, consult, you match, match, you engage, collaborate, build capacity. Right. Oh, okay. Dr. Lau, yes, Prof. Raja is Prof. Ulong. Sorry, I got very confused with uh, Prof. Kahoma, Prof. Uh, uh, Ulong, and also Emeritus Professor and so forth. Yes, my mistake. Prof. Uh, Raja is uh, Prof. Ulong. So, Prof. Raja um, has all the way become, um, uh, he is one of the knowledge broker here. Okay. And next. The social media, um, social networking platforms. So all of this uh, is actually quite familiar for all of you. Um, the tools to improve visibility. First, we are communicate, um, communicating research, right? So there are all the tools out there, and these are the platforms. And most of it you have already shared uh, earlier in our example for the Slido, like Twitter, Kudos, LinkedIn, Blog, Big Share, Facebook, uh, Research Collaboration, Orchid, and so forth, Research Get. Okay, so most of it you have mentioned in um in the example that all of you provided. Okay, so um social media. Do you use social media? Okay, so for the first question, it's very redundant. Everyone uses uh, social media nowadays. But what I want to ask is actually, are you using social media professionally? All right, so I'll open to the floor. Are you using social media professionally? Anyone would like to um, unmute yourself and share your answer? Do you use social media professionally? No, not professionally. Um, you are using social media for social events, right? Uh, Dr. Fazriel? Uh, yeah, it's just a... Uh... Personal just the social media okay yeah yeah no worries i i agree with you i don't use my facebook for uh professional things as well okay yeah. Ngoi, you have a fresh official facebook account for your lab great that will be that is something you know something to start with how about others How about others or okay what if um okay let's try this as well you can just uh for this answer right if you are using social media professionally can you raise your hand can you use the raise hand function okay dr mm, you're starting trying to start one uh for your research group good move good move you can start with individual first Okay, anyone raising hand using social media professionally? The social media actually involve like uh, Facebook just now, all this, LinkedIn. I'm, I'm sure all of you have LinkedIn account, right? LinkedIn professional account? Any um, volunteers would like to raise hand? No, nope. nobody raising hand? The Aga, no, uh, yes, but not very active. Okay, the Terrence, using Twitter to follow academics of similar interest. Great. Okay. Right, we have some response here. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you for those who have uh, given your response. Your response. Oh, Dr. Yap, privacy. Hmm. All right. That will be my next slide. 
Okay, so what is social media? Social media, to put it sim simple, right, is actually a public conversation through digital media. So social media is just like, com um, it's a conversation. It's communicate, uh, communicating. You start with conversation through social media, um, but it's public. Everyone can see what you are talking about. Uh, whether um, you know, like if you use some slang or anything, or um, you you just type up and it will be, it will be out there through digital media. What is the major issues for researchers uh, to use social media? A lot of us are quite reluctant when we we share that we talk about that using social media as a main uh, platform or a medium for um, science communication for uh, research communication. So like, say for example, Dr. Yap mentioned earlier, um, for, because of the privacy issue. Yeah, I do understand that. So a lot of us feel that um, social media is like intrusion. You know, you, you publicize whatever you do out there. And the other thing is like, no time. Okay, I understand that as researchers, you have a lot of KPI that you need to meet. So no time is uh, has become an uh, uh, excuse or, or, or your reasonable reason for not using uh, social media um, to share and to communicate. All right, Dr. Ng, you use LinkedIn, right? So what we want, what, what we hope from this uh, session is that you recognize social and digital media, digital media effort as part of the research process. Okay, it's not, not just like saying um, social media is something bad. You can turn it around, use it as a professionally, use it professionally to share out um, your um, research. LinkedIn, LinkedIn is a very professional platform. So say for example, um, for myself uh, as an industry liaison, I use LinkedIn a lot. What do I put in LinkedIn? My, my LinkedIn account is where um, the external stakeholders, uh, my industry partners actually reach out to me uh, to, um, you know, if you can create a professional account for, uh, for your lab group or anything is, why not? Okay, some, some of us, okay, for LinkedIn, of course, there is some limitation because LinkedIn is very widely used by industry players, um, by corporate entities. But um, for researchers, if you your aim is to share, to communicate, uh, communicate your results or your findings to more general public, then Facebook will be another option. But of course, when you share all the, the Facebook, be careful about like how no nothing privacy, not to share like, very privacy things. Um, but uh, you can share about interesting things because nowadays Facebook, we have like Facebook Live. Okay, you can talk about, you can have like a science cafe of uh, through Facebook Live um, and start engaging or start sharing some uh, science information with the public. You can start from uh, small, then slowly grow it bigger. Okay. All right. Next, activity time. Because all of you, right, you mentioned about social media, you know about Twitter, you know about Facebook and so forth. So I'm sure, um, okay, don't tell me about Instagram because Instagram is just sharing photos, sharing pictures, but there is not much words in there. So what um, the next activity is, I'd like you to summarize. We are talking about all um, really serious matter here, serious, your research. So summarize your research in a tweet. Okay, I say for example, now I'm your audience. I'm a general public. I don't. I'm not in the same field with you. Okay, maybe uh, though I I will be under, uh, I will be able to understand what you are talking about because of my role as a research manager, as an industry liaison and research manager. But um, just treat me as a layman, a public, general public. So if I ask you, so what your research is about? Can you summarize your research in a tweet? So in a tweet, right, it's not 140 words. Okay, it's not a paragraph, but it's actually the character. So it's the ABCD, 140 or less. Would you be able to manage that? Everyone, okay? 
Okay. Any response? Is this activity? Um, can you manage it? Okay, the Aga. How about others? Okay or not okay? Do you have some example, Dr. Lee? Mm, do I have some example? Uh, okay, I have to count the, the word. Okay, say for example, uh, the last round, okay, wait, uh, let me see. The last round that I did research was um, my PhD research, but uh, okay, even though like um, now I, I do involve in several, uh, several research, um, okay, totally. For your question, right, uh, the sample, I don't have a sample here. So uh, what I can, can roughly um, elaborate for you is that try to summarize your research in one sentence. One sentence, which is around um, 10 words. I guess if like 10 words, right, um, one word, 14, 14 alphabet, uh, that is an average of it, okay? Can try, Dr. Fazli can try, uh, Dr. Idris, okay, all right. So just write something, Dr. Ng, okay. Are you sure, Dr. Ng, this is uh, 140 characters? Improving health and outcomes for indigenous communities by pairing the research with medical outreach programs and engaging multinational and multi-organizational uh, approach. What I can do, right, let me see. Um, I can try to copy um, this into words file and we, we can have a check whether uh, what Dr. Ng just uh, written here um, is 140 characters. Hey, wait, we have to count, sorry. <laughs> yeah, the word file, it can only count the word. Okay, never mind. Just ignore me. Um, we'll go back. I have to come one by one, Dr. Ng. Um, okay, how about others? Really can check all words? I thought uh, the words is only um, checking. Okay, hold on, yeah. One hundred fifty-three, Doctor Fazril, you really go and count. Doctor Fazril, can you can you unmute yourself? I oh, just you your... oh, I opened Microsoft Word ready, so I just checked for you lah. One hundred fifty-three. Ah, yes. go for the reviewer, right? Uh, wait, we'll count characters. Yes, one hundred fifty-three. What was my um just now? What is or my... Twitter is like body, no? <laughs> <laughs> so, Dr. Ng, you might need to throw out one word, I guess. Thank you, Dr. Fazril. All right. Uh, okay. Hold on. Let me go back to, um, to everyone's uh, chat here. Okay. Did I miss out anyone else? Yep, Dr. Karen, I just realized that <laughs> initially I thought it's just... Because we are so used to like uh, counting the words, but I forgot about character. Okay, so the Aga, contributing to a greener and healthier Malaysia. Okay, good. But um, I I would have some questions though. Um, based on like what you have shared for your graphical abstract yesterday. So because the contributing to a greener and healthier Malaysia is too broad. Okay. Be, uh, because we are we are going to use like Twitter to share about your research about your work. So this uh, this uh, statement is uh, too broad. Perhaps you can because you are still under the 140 40 characters uh, limit. So maybe you can add in some more words uh, to improve. Okay, what the third shared just now, uh, improving health and outcomes. This is very very clear. We know about what you are doing actually. We can actually guess your research, um, your research project or your findings through um, this uh, Twitter, through this tweet. Yep. You have already, the team has already included like um, the objective in it. 
in a very smart way and uh, who are the audience, the targeted groups also in there and what is uh, how the methodology is also in the same sentence. That's great. Okay. Right, the technique is very fast. Dr. Terrence, yours is medical doctor interested in aging, muscle and bone research. So what's about your research project? Okay, uh, well, Dr. Idris, uh, passionate life scientist with interest in natural products, research and communication. Focus is to develop and formulate bioactive, what, uh, bioactive rich health products. All right. Yeah, this is an introduction of yourself in a Twitter way, Twitter way of introduction. But the Shina, health equality for all through improved awareness. Yep. I think this is quite fun, right? Because you, you get to learn like how to actually um, think about your research and uh, incorporate it with the social media. This is actually, um, um, the, all these activities, right? I'm actually giving you training. Training as in hands-on, uh, you actually do it yourself on how to communicate your research. Okay, Dr. Fazril, antioxidant properties of tiger milk mushroom show promising results as a given in diabetes. Wow, this is interesting. So if I'm a public, right? Uh, I'm Okay, yes, I am a normal public. So with a Dr. Fazril tweet here, I'm interested to read out more. Because it's antioxidant property. So I would be like, I would like to find out more about the tiger milk mushroom. I'd like to know um what uh, how how I can become younger, uh, younger through through uh, tiger milk mushroom. Right, Dr. Fazriel? Yeah, I just thought it's like, you know, um obviously you can put everything in, but it's like mm -hmm. hopefully it interests people enough. But actually, if you do the research, if you look at my research, it's like we're doing it in a mouse model. So, mm -hmm. and we've seen promising results. So it's just enough to just hopefully catch the attention of people. Yes, 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 you can, you can start doing that. Okay, Dr. Lee, all the life matters, public perception on COVID-19 in nursing homes. This is very interesting as well, Dr. Lee. Would you like to unmute yourself for a while? Oh, Dr. Lee? Hi. Hi, uh, Dr. Lee. All right. Uh, sim I simply tembak first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no worries. Because this is just, um, I, everyone here is, uh, we are friends. We are all from UM. We, we, we are in the system. So, so no worries. However, uh, it's being discussed here, um, it's just a way to learn from each other. Okay? You can learn yeah. from uh, all the other uh, researchers uh, from other faculties as well. Okay, Dr. Ngoi, um, antimicrobial uh, bill resistance and bacterial genomics from genetics to biotechnology. Well, well, okay. So, Dr. Ngoi, you are from genetics department? Uh, hi. Yeah, Dr. Ngoi. Hi, uh, yeah. I'm from medical microbiology. Ah, medical microbiology. All right. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. So, uh, okay. I think that it's like more than 15 minutes we have um, we have like very actively communicating, uh, engaging with each other uh, through the activity of um, summarizing your research in a tweet. So now after this, right, think about when, when we start, when you have um, done your research, uh, remember yesterday when I show you the whole research cycle? So start about thinking of engaging the, the cycle after you have Publish after you have done your publication, start thinking about engaging, start thinking about creating, you know, like building the, uh, the pathway to impact. Okay, although the pathway to impact should, the evidencing should start uh, from the beginning of your research. So later uh, in our next topic, we will be talking about uh, some of the research impact, but I, I won't go into uh, details of what research impact is, but um, just a general, um, you know, like a surface. So that you have, you can grasp an idea what research impact is about and how you can include from the beginning of your research, from even ideation, from planning of your research, okay, moving towards the impact. So what's our tagline of UM? Now testing time. Everyone, 
um, BC, uh, Datuk BC shared in his uh, 100 days speech, right? And reveal uh, our new UM tagline. So what's our new UM tagline? Hmm, just want to know. Poise. Poise, poise is our values. <laughs> Although I know, yeah, poise is a very, um, is very catchy and very easy to uh, remember. Dr. Terrence, Global University, what's the full, uh, the full tagline? What's the full tagline? Aha, now, now I'm, not only uh, Dr. VC uh, revealed it during the 100 days of uh, his amanat. Yep, Dr. Aga, you get the front part, correct? Oh, you get the whole sentence, great, yes. So our full tagline, let's have a, um, okay, let's us all clap for Dr. Aga for being a very, um, you know, like, <laughs> okay, I don't, I don't know where's the function, but I think you can have the function of, can just like, uh, clapping or, yeah, you can have the clapping function here. Okay, Dr. Karen, uh, no, the hashtag, okay, our new UM hashtag or the tagline is UM serving the nation, impacting the world. Okay, yes, Dr. Lau, great. So now, at least, uh, if you if you cannot remember, I hope you, after going through, you know, like doing the hands-on activities, um, you actually learn and you do um, what, you know, like the first um, session, we are talking about communicating research. So, UM's tagline, back to UM's tagline, is serving the nation, impacting the world. So what's the message here? The message is all of our researchers, all of us, all of you, I, I also am part of the researchers as well because I also involved in research. So all of us, um, when we start with any project, whatever project, okay, new project or even like ongoing project, start thinking about how you can do some impact through your research. Okay, so all of us here, we have a man, uh, we have a mandate, we have a, we have our objective, we have a mission here as a researcher. The mission of UM researcher is to serve the nation, to serve Malaysia, to serve the community in Malaysia, and slowly impact the world. Okay, all right, so take a break. I've been talking for the past 40, 40 minutes, 40 minutes, give me a break. So um, five minutes break. Okay, yeah, you can you can get something. Uh, for those who puasa, just rehat sebentar. Okay, five minutes. And uh, for others, uh, maybe you can just grab like uh, get some drinks and so forth. Uh, while you sit back, right in front of the laptop and going through um the training. So we will come back uh, after five minutes and we will go to our next topic, right? So I try to put like um. Yeah, uh, we have three topics to cover, so I try to put, um, we will finish by 12, okay? We have three topics, all right? So five minutes break, and we will be back in a while. See you later. Are you still, still having your break? Okay, yes, Dr. No, no, yes, uh, Mr. Fazril. All right, so we'll continue to the next topic, the next uh, big topic. Um, Perhaps I think if, uh, going by the speed, I guess we can finish earlier, slightly earlier, uh, maybe earlier than uh, 12 uh, p.m. But we, we have uh, some other activities. Um, so perhaps there might be some activities that you, are, you will be taking um, more time uh, than the time that I allocated um, there. So never mind, building impact. Okay, back, back to the next topic. So why I choose a building impact? As a researcher, when we talk about impact, right, building impact is from your research. Okay, research impact. Ta -da. Okay, a disclaimer, uh, this slide is taken from Academy Science Malaysia. Um, all right, by the way, who has uh, followed through a uh, prof, um, that, okay, not prof, Dr. Asma's uh, talk the other day? Raise hand. Anyone of you have uh, followed through? Dr. Aga, right, good. So you have seen this, Dr. Lau, great. You have seen this slide, right, in uh, Dr. Asma's um, presentation? How about others? Okay. 
Anyone else? No, don't know. It's okay. Uh, it's that it, there, the talk itself, the webinar itself is very interesting. Dr. Fazril, you all know. Try, try to go and um, look for uh, the recording okay, by Dr. Alsma. So it was, uh, it was very specific for uh, UM. Okay, the talk was um, conducted by Center of Research Services, PPP. And I think there is, uh, you can try go to Facebook. Okay, Facebook, go to UM, UM Research, UM Research Facebook. So I guess the recording of uh, Dr. Asma's um, presentation, the, um, the webinar, will still be there. Okay, right. So Dr. Asma, um, her background, she is the president of uh, Academ um, ASM, ASM Fellow, so president of Academy Science Malaysia. And uh, in her presentation, so the topic itself, right, I can't remember the title of the uh, presentation, but um, this slide actually captures um, captures my attention okay. a wow project so this was actually coming from um dr nair's um source is from dr nair's in 2021 okay uh wow project so is your project a wow project what is a wow project wow w a world class okay your project is meeting a global challenges, is very novel, innovative, solving major problem or challenge. Or, um, okay, the, the O for a while, your project is also outstanding, which is the quality of the proposal of your project with a clear objective, significance and impact. See the word impact here. And with sound and rigorous uh, methodology, and it is easy to understand by non-specialists. Now you know why it is important for today's uh, training. I uh, remember earlier the first topic, uh, communicating your research. So easy to be understand by non-specialists. Uh, non and the last W is a winnable, okay? Which wins the hearts and minds of the community, of the stakeholders. Okay, thanks, Prof. Noran. Uh, Prof. Noran, you're, you're way up there. So, Prof. Noran is our uh, dean uh, for research cluster of uh, well, health and well being. Thank you, Prof. Noran, for joining us um, for the past one hour. So, winnable. It wins the hearts and minds of um, the mind and um, the community and also stakeholders, which is also the word impact. Okay impact here. So you see, even the word impact, right, in this slide alone, it appears twice. Impact here, then impact in outstanding as well. Okay, now, think back. Now it's a open discussion time. Okay, open for all participa uh, participants. So, right, um, well, we'll talk about your project, your research project. Is your project a wall project? Okay, some of you have already shared, right? I roughly know, say, for example, um, Dr. Noise, um, antimicrobial, uh, antimicrobial resistant and bacterial genomics. Uh, Dr. Lee's uh, on the public's perception on COVID 19 prevention in nursing home. Okay, um, Dr. Fazril, the tiger milk mushroom. Yep, yeah. and then who else? The Sheena just now, uh, health equality, yeah, on the improved awareness. And then, uh, who else, yeah? Dr. Aga, I think. Okay, Dr. Aga's one is um, green and health, uh, healthier, um, healthier Malaysia. Yeah. Then Dr. Ng, health, improving health outcomes for indigenous communities, uh, pairing research with medical outreach program. All right. So, we will... Take Dr. Ng's, um, Dr. Ng's uh, project. Okay. Dr. Ng, you are here, right? Hello, Dr. Ng. Are you able to unmute yourself for a while? Okay, I guess medical doctor would be a bit difficult. 
but it's okay. Um, let me see. How about we will try with okay. Mm, tiger milk, tiger milk mushroom, Dr. Fazil. Can you unmute yourself? Yeah. Okay. So is your project a wow project? Um, does it tackle global challenges? Uh, but it's innovative, right? <laughs> uh in, in yeah, a, global challenges I mean, so yeah i mean um, it, it's yeah. a traditional way but like mm -hmm. um i mean there's a lot of research now going back into um i guess foods that we've traditionally eaten and like just uh we are like the project or the group that i'm in we're sort of working backwards um we are trying to verify claims mm -hmm. that the indigenous people are doing so i don't know if it's innovative, but at least we are, uh, we are finding our research are showing so there are some truth to what is claimed by the indigenous people. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So it's novel. So the global challenges, I'm not sure because, um, NP well, I mean, is, is a global challenge. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's what I want to say. Okay. So the outstanding, the rigorous methodology. Okay. Easy to understand that one you have tackled. The winnable, you also win the heart for indigenous community. Oh, I guess. thank you. Hopefully I did. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So can you, should you consider, okay, I mean, can you consider your project a, a world project or maybe you need to improve further for the world class, probably, the global challenges? Probably, um, there is room for improvement in um mm. i mean we applied for an irg and we didn't get it but we want to okay. sort of like innovate a little bit more with the tech technology side of things to make mm -hmm. it yeah, maybe it's like 80 percent there so we need all right oh yeah okay all the best uh, dr fazil thank you okay anyone else would you like to unmute yourself Or if you are too shy, you can just like uh, type in the chat because I'm I'm having two comp uh, laptops in front of me, two screens. So one is uh, where I maneuver the chat box, and the other one is my presentation slide. So anyone else that you would like to share, or maybe you are not sure whether your your project is considered a wow, because this is uh this is like a group discussion. Okay, so the thing with uh, virtual um virtual training is that we okay we don't see each other so we can't feel the way of like you know in the real how it feels in a room where you can do active uh, participation so we try to create it virtually online whether your project is a wow project anyone would like to share come on come on Come on, don't be shy. Anyone can share. Uh, okay. Um, uh, hi, Dr. No. <laughs> like I, I mentioned yesterday, I'm developing yes. a case to measure the rel uh, religious faith in, in sports. Mm -hmm. And this questionnaire is the first uh, questionnaire to measure the religious uh, faith. Mm. Actually, not in psychology, in sports. Okay, so, so there you have uh, answered the novelty yes. of the projects. Okay. So I'm following the you know right pro, uh, research process to develop mm -hmm. and validate the questionnaire. Mm -hmm. So uh, and also I'm trying to write the um, uh, the 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 contents easy to understand. All right. Uh, yeah. The outstanding. Okay. How about yeah. like um? So what's the stage of uh, your project at the moment? I don't know. Uh, my my process. Yeah, stage. the project. Oh, okay. I finished the um, uh, content validity. All right. Uh, All right. With, uh, panel of experts and also mm -hmm. I, I've done with a pilot study. So now, uh, for the factor analysis, uh, I'm collect more data. I think maybe around six hundred participants. Hmm. So I am collecting data for the factor analysis. Okay. So I guess uh, while you are collecting the data from the participants, right, you 600 participants. Mm -hmm. So that is where you can start your impact evidencing, the pathway to impact. You, know, like you get them involved, get the stakeholders. They are your stakeholders. 
So mm. they eventually they will be the one um, who is actually going to, um, if I'm not mistaken, your project is about the um, religious religious understanding for yeah. for sport performance, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Religious. Yeah. yeah. So see, there you have that stakeholders there. So um, the impact part, go for it. All the best, all the I best for, for your project. Right, Thank Dr. Terrence, all projects lead to a wow project eventually. Wow, Dr. Terrence, you have a very, <laughs> okay, it's good to be very confident, but, um, well, sometimes, um, as, I mean, like, um, frankly, frankly speaking, um, being in the central office, Yes, uh, I, I don't doubt that uh, you and our researchers, we do have a very good project. But uh, to claim that all projects lead to a wall project, uh, well, um, how should I put? Sometimes there, there is like hmm, one or two rotten apples in a basket, if you understand my, um, you know. So that's, that's fact, that's fact, all right? Um, we, we have, um, UM still has a huge room for improvement. Okay, and we are trying to um, we we trying to help, we uh, support, help, and uh, to push for all researchers um, to go uh, towards this uh, direction. Okay, for the uh, addressing the global challenges and outstanding um, the proposal and winnable. Why uh, I mentioned that uh, the, the Terrence is because uh, the quality of proposal. So sometimes, right, um, I guess I have a colleague here, uh, Juan Azura from PPGP. So, right, so sometimes when, when um, the central office is right, reviewing some of the proposal, the proposal seems uh, very um, lacking in terms of like the information is uh, still, still um, not, not until, you know, like the world-class universities uh, standard, okay? There is like a lot of uh, rooms for improvement. So, yeah, so I guess um, from the central office side, uh, we will do what we can to help and to assist the researchers. Okay? All right. So, shall we go for one last uh, wall project discussion? But Dr. Terrence, you can, you can just, like, uh, yeah, you can. All right, I see someone raising hand. Hold on. Who is raising hand? Oh, you want to just say, uh... Hi, hi, sorry. Hi, Dr. I, Terrence. I, yes, Dr. I, Terrence. I think what I was trying to imply is that whatever, I can speak for myself, like, whatever I'm okay. doing now, I probably wouldn't take the three criteria that you have on the screen as a definition of a WOW project. But I think mm -hmm. the aspiration should always be whatever little bit we do, we mm. maybe consider a pre-WOW project that would lead to the WOW project that we all want to aspire to. Like. But so, Terence, I really like your um your motivation, your self motivation. <laughs> I do wow. hope that if all our young researchers in UF has this kind of spirit and this kind of um you know, like uh your morality, I'm sure UF will strive even better. Very kind of you, but uh, I, I I suspect I, I probably echo the thoughts of the people in this group lah. And I mean, a session like this probably has already some selection bias that people who come to this wants to do better. So I think I, I echo the, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the so... views in this room lah. So I don't think it's a personal view. I think it's a collective view lah. Thank you. All right, all right. Thank you, Dr. Terence. Uh, thanks for sharing your thoughts. It's very um, and also your um, your suggestions and your ideas is very interesting. Uh, to look for uh, to have such an insight from you okay right so we will move on because we are talking about wall project okay we will move on okay the logic model so this logic model right is also being applied uh, to the linear uh, model of um you know, the linear of input output and and so forth until impact so this is a, okay, what is a logic model? First, you have the input. Okay, input is the resources dedicated or to uh, consume or consumed by the project. So the inputs, right, uh, usually is um, like, say, for example, your research assistants. Okay, you hire research assistants. You have like lab facilities, you buy consumables, you buy the reagents. Okay, the money, the budget that you have already counted for the projects, you receive it from the grant. Okay, and the time, 
time span uh, to do the research. So all this is actually the input, okay, for a project, for a project. Then activities is where, uh, what, what have you done um, to fulfill the mission or to fulfill your objective of the projects. So the activities, um, you can have like, you know, like data collection, okay, sampling, um, assessing or reviewing or like what just now that the uh, no mention uh, her, hers is more on the because of, of her um, background of study so it's more on the survey form so when you do all the uh, interviews and so forth that will consider the activities which you conduct from the input you have the activities and output what is the output uh, the output is the volume of work accomplished by the project so in uh, whenever you apply for a grant, right, you will be uh, you will be stating very clearly. So what is the activities? What are the methodology? What is the output? So output say for example number of um a, a number of human capital um from your master student or your PhD students number of papers or even patterns. If some of you from your project you have a new pattern, so or you aim for a pattern from the project, so that. The numbers is will be your output, okay? Then outcome and impact. So for these two, or for the front part, the input activities output is very very normal, very uh, general. And I believe all of you here, all of us here in the room, um, this one we don't have any problem. But what is the difference between outcome and impact? A lot of us uh, usually confuse for these three categories: the output outcome and impact. So the difference between outcome and also in impact as compared to output, right? Output is, a, is quantifiable, but outcome is actually the benefit or the changes for uh, participation during the project activities. So the outcome, right, usually is like a change, a change of like increased skill, okay? Increase um, uh, or enhance, um, all right, the risk. Yeah, thank you. No worries. Okay, increased skill or maybe like um, better health. Okay, that will be your outcome of the project. But that is outcome. Then what is the impact? So impact is something that is long term, long term consequences of the intervention of whatever projects that you have. So the impact is a fundamental change. Okay, intended or unintended in a system or even a society. Okay, still with this? Is it very um, still confusing? Okay, so, well, <clears throat> the input and activities is your plan work. Okay, but this from output, outcomes, and impact is your intended results, right? Okay, next slide. And what is the linkages? Okay, this slide, um, right, I uh, obtained it from the Prof Hasib. Okay, this is actually from the IIRG um, briefing session. I think this one, um, if those, uh, uh, some of you who has actually uh, have grants, the IIRG grant, I believe that you have already attended the session. So this was actually retrieved from the uh, UCD's uh, report. The linkages, okay. So input, your research funding, like just now I mentioned, the researchers, your RA, Okay, facility, equipment, existing knowledge, and then you conduct activities and what, whatever you are doing. Then, okay, the output. What is the output? The numbers, okay, like publication, human capital, prototypes, patterns, or um, new companies form, exhibition, and so forth. Then, differences, the outcome, and impact. So, outcome here, update, uh, uptake of uh, device therapies, uptake of tools, and instrument, uh, instrumentation. So, okay, for example, because yesterday we learned about impact metrics, right? The publication is the number, which is your output. But the citation, okay, citation is like citing the publication will be uh, the outcome of your output, okay? And what's the impact? The impact will be uh, perhaps, um, if we are looking at this um, row, right, it will be your performance, your impact as a researcher then, okay? Your performance as a researcher. So impact is usually a very long term, okay? It involves like economical, society, the education, health and well-being and environmental. 
All right. So, in short, I try to collect all the um, definition of what is impact. Okay, and also, okay, so impact is the demo uh, demonstrable contribution that excellent research makes to the society or and the economy. So this is from the Research Council UK. Uh, and for because under Research Council UK, there is a framework called the Research Excellence Framework. And impact is defined under this REF. Impact is defined as a, in, an effect on a change, benefit to the economy, society, culture, public policy, and so forth. Okay, this is from the, counts, um, the research council. In short, the provable benefits of research in the real world, that is impact. So what is the provable benefits? Okay, research at England also said that the effect on, okay, you can see it's actually repeating, effect on change, benefit to the economy and so forth, beyond academia. So the, the key word here where we talk about impact is actually beyond academia because when we look at it right it's all how the excellent research facts to the society and to the economy and so forth right so it's beyond academia and beyond the contribution to academic research it's not about how many papers you publish it's not about how many isi you publish okay it's not even about like how many conferences you attended how many calls you conducted and so forth that will be all under your impact as an academician. That will be your KPI score. So the KPI is actually a quantifiable, but impact is very um, qualitative. Okay, it's very qualitative and it's beyond the academic research. Okay, we are talking about um, more than that, right? And um, because earlier I've already asked and we discussed about the WOW, WOW project. So WOW project, is your research making an impact? Okay, what is impact then? All right, I had a discussion with Dr. Julie Belly. I think you can um, hear um, Dr. Julie Belly. She is now in UC, uh, UCL, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, I met with her um, when my study tour to uh, Coventry. So during that study tour, we had a discussion on research impact. So what is impact and what is not? Impact is, the keyword is the change in something beyond academia. For example, the change in policy. You are using the results uh, or whatever findings you have from your research to change the policy, the increase of effectiveness of uh, something, okay? Improve well-being of um, human for those who are from the Faculty of Medicine or even Social Sciences, okay? Improve uh, well-being, reduce costs. So there is a change. There is a positive or a negative change. It doesn't matter. So it can be an increase, improve, reduce. That will be some of the key, uh, I mean like the, uh, the verb for impact, okay? And it is demonstrated with evidence, all right? There is evidence because we did X and therefore there's a change in Y, okay? Because we did this. Say for example, um, maybe if your research, right? Because of what you have done, um, then the community benefit, okay? Uh, I, I can just think about the tiger milk mushroom and also the uh, indigenous community. So perhaps your impact will be something beyond. This is something wild. I'm not sure whether it is relevant. I'm just uh, quoting an example. Perhaps because of you use um, the tiger milk mushroom, which is a, a traditionally uh, a herb, which is only used by the indigenous. Therefore, what is the change? The change is that uh, more people will know about the image, uh, about um, the tiger milk mushroom. Okay, there is a change in the society. Okay, more people will know about it. More people will know the benefit of tiger milk mushroom, or even um, change in economical. Perhaps um, because uh, you need to get uh, the indigenous people to help you to harvest the tiger milk mushroom. There is some income for the uh, indigenous group. There is a change in the economical for indigenous group you somehow from the research, right, your impact is you help to build, um, to raise the cost, or I mean like uh, the status of uh, the living status of the indigenous group, okay? That will be the impact. So that is all considered under impact because you have done something, therefore there is a change in, um, in whatever it is. And this is achievable through partnerships, 
through collaboration and through engagement. And that is where our office, okay, I'm just starting to promote my office. You have eyes come in, okay? You have eyes in industry and community engagement office. So what we do, that will be our, um, our tagline, connect, engage, and partner. So we, um, okay, we've, um, we, uh, how should I put it? All right. Um, the impact can be achieved through partnership, through collaboration, through engagement. So say, for example, if your research, right, of course, you will engage with stakeholders. Your stakeholders, uh, whoever it is in your stakeholders, you have a partnership with them, you collaborate with them, and you engage your stakeholders in your research. Then you will see the impact slowly building. All right? All right, Dr. Fazri, thank you. Thank you that agree with me. So that will be the explanation of impact. But sometimes, um, some of um, our researchers, right, because uh, research impact, is actually a uh, worldwide is quite new but even though in uk it has already started for uh, quite some time and if uh, in uk the ref exercise um they had the ref exercise in 2021 which is this year that will be the second exercise already and they have already evaluating about the impact yeah so um prominent i mean like um those um, who are very uh, who are the pioneer in the research impact globally um is actually um, a new thing, I would say a new thing, uh, just uh, for the past decade, for uh, the 10 years globally. So UM, we are actually moving towards that. And remember yesterday when I showed you about the ranking of uh, THE impact ranking, and the impact ranking shows about the SDG um, or the SDG uh, criteria and so forth. All right, now you know, right? But the thing is, a lot of the researchers, right, um, they, um, how should I put, um, there might be some misunderstanding about impact. So impact is not about dissemination. When we talk about like, okay, you put your uh, research, your publication in ResearchGate, you thought you have built impact, no? Nope. That you are just a knowledge, um, what was the word already um, earlier? when we talk about the um, communicating research, knowledge communication, information intermediary. So dissemination is just an information intermediary. You are not building impact yet, okay? Or even like visibility or attention, okay? Say for example, you are in being invited to talk about the research findings. You are being interviewed by television, by radio station, and you thought you have built an impact. But in reality, that is not an impact because there is no change. How do you how do you know whether whatever you are um, sharing through the interviews is being able to change uh, the behavior or the attitude, or um, there is some increment or a dec decrease or reduce and improve um, things you know, uh, by the stakeholders or by the public? So visibility is not an impact, and the pathway. The pathway of engagement, okay, it is not the impact. The pathway here is the track where you start building the impact. So if, say, for example, if you um, you have engaged, okay, those who have IIRG grant, one of the criteria is the engagement with external stakeholders. Am I right? Okay, so uh, en engagement with st external stakeholders like the industry, like the community, NGO, um, foundation, or uh, whatever it is, Okay, when you start engaging these stakeholders, okay, that pathway itself is not, not yet an impact, but it is actually, um, it is needed. It is needed to get the impact, but it's not the impact itself. And impact is um, prioritized over excellent research, okay, is uh, separate to research, all right. So for the two, the two points out there, are down there, it's still, okay, uh, don't worry if you, don't really get what, what it means. But what you have to remember, at least from this slide, right? What what is impact and what is more not uh, what is not considered an, an impact. So to put it in summary, impact is a change. So the word is just a change. Change in policy, change in okay, uh, whether there is like you know like the rate of increasing, decreasing, uh, improve or uh, becoming better or becoming worse, all of that is actually an impact. Okay, and it, 
impact has to be demonstrated by evidence. It needs to be shown by evidence. And um, the, the statement is that it, because you did this and therefore there is a change in why, okay? But impact is not um, impact is not about dissemination. Impact is not about visibility or attention. And for sure, the engagement is just a pathway and it's not impact. All right? So, also a while. All of you, any questions? Anything that you are not clear? Anyone wants to unmute and ask anything or? Okay, everyone. Okay, good, clear. Is it clear? Yeah, yes. I, I think it's clear, but uh, we'll see how, because um, I was just wondering what are the like, um, because from UMIs, right? So I was just yeah. wondering what kind of support do you guys provide for like maybe research, young researchers like us? <laughs> what yeah. kind of, okay. What we do is we do connection, we do engagement and we do partnership. So which means that, um, okay. Yeah, later I will share about UMIs when we talk about uh, towards the end where, um, because the last topic uh, after the research impact, right? I'll be talking about, um, partnership with stakeholders. All right. So far so good, yeah? Okay, so we shall move on then. We will move on to the next slide. Type of impact. Okay, type of impact. So what is the type of impact? It's benefits of research beyond academia, okay? So that, that it's actually very simple for impact. It's only like a few keywords that you have to remember and uh, implant it in yourself, in your mind, okay, whenever you are doing research. Okay, impact is something beyond academia. It's the benefits beyond the academia. Okay, what are the type? Like economical, societal, social impact, public policy and services, health, cultural, quality of life, international, environmental, and so forth. So the impact can be on products, process, practices, policies, behaviors, understanding, or um, avoiding uh, harm or waste um, of resources. Okay. Oh, sorry for the spelling mis mistake there. I didn't notice that. Okay, typo, <laughs> all right. And um, further examples of impact will be like wealth creation, okay? Wealth creation where uh, business is actually economical, but uh, you create wealth, environmental, um, where, um, say for example, the river now is like ten percent cleaner than before. Healthcare, right? Um, from those from faculty of medicine, for, um, or faculty of pharmacy, faculty of um, dentistry might be very. Uh, uh, you are very clear with this. How many lives are being saved? So that would be the impact from healthcare and social cohesion. For example, policy developed to improve the social networking uh, among pensioners and so forth. All right. So I guess the type of impact is very straightforward. It's just about like what are the different types of impact that you can think of. So it's like usually the normal one, like economical, the social impact, um, public policy, the health impact, the cultural impact, the quality of life, or international where um, whatever you are doing is like impacting uh, globally. So that would be the global impact and environmental, okay? And why? Do we measure impact? Why measuring impact? So the reason, right? This is also adapt, uh, adapted from Prof. Asma's uh, slide, Dr. Asma's slide. The reason why you need to measure impact, um, to put it simple, is that there is a four A's: advocacy, accountability, analysis, and allocation. So advocacy is actually to help in gaining support. Why impact? Because you need some, some more support, okay, advocacy. So you try to make more people to understand about your, your research, okay, and to, in order to gain the support. Accountability is to show what you have, been, uh, what you have achieved so far, all right? And then analysis, uh, so finding out which approach is more effective. 
allocation, of course, is like consideration of um, the investment and so forth. So the measurement of research impact is essential to help the direct to, to help direct the allocation of limited research re resources. Because nowadays, right, funding for research is very, very scarce. Even you, uh, as young researchers, I guess everyone, uh, we are very clear that uh, it's getting more and more difficult to um, secure a funding. Okay, what more to say, um, secure a, a research funding. So your research funding has been cut a lot. It's not, no longer um, luxurious. Like a few years back, uh, maybe if you compare to your seniors in the faculty or even to the mentors, yeah, it's not as luxurious as before. So money is hard now, okay? And with these limited research resources, right, what are, um, what are you going to do with that? So by measuring impact, we are trying to look at maximizing the research benefit and minimizing the research waste. Because when funding is um, it's like very easily get, uh, you can easily get funding, um, a lot of the time, the allocation or the, um, the money, the funding is actually being wet. Why um, say so? So for example, um, in, in, okay, we, we look at it very, very objectively. I'm not trying to um, complain or anything, but look at it objectively. Because when there is a, a very um, luxurious funding, right? Every researcher wants to have um, a specific equipment in your own lab, okay, in the own lab. But um, the equipment can be shared uh, with other researchers. You know, sometimes the equipment is, um, or maybe some machine is very common, okay, uh, where you can actually share uh, maybe with uh, the team or maybe with the faculty members or even sharing with the, um, the university, other faculty who might want to use the same equipment. So by, by this kind of uh, sharing, right, you are actually um, maximizing the equipment. You have the ROI of the equipment, return on investment. But the aga, new equipment is required. I don't doubt so. Uh, what I, I put here is that, yes, um, yes, sometimes, right, the new equipment, if there are things, there are times that some of the equipment is very, very specific to your research. Um, what we are, uh, what we are sharing, sharing here is that, but uh, when some equipment switch is common, the common uh, use equipment. Sorry, I'm not from uh, chemical or I, I'm not very sure what's the name. Like I only know uh, my colleagues mentioning like GCMS, things like that, you know, like microscope or, or things like that, uh, where uh, you don't have to have like one microscope each for, uh, for your own lab. Okay. Uh, yes, Dr. Aga, I agree with that uh, too. Uh, emerging without emerging technology, yeah. But when um, but what we can do when the, the funding is scarce? I'm throwing a question here to everyone. So from the management point of view, uh, from the management, it's actually happening everywhere. It's not just in uh, UM, ju ju not just in Malaysia, but it's actually happening everywhere else. So with a very scarce funding, right? Research funding. What is what can you do? How can you um, minimize the research waste? Okay, I'm looking at uh, the the guys comment. Hmm. I guess the equipment that you want to buy must be super expensive, right? Yeah, so, okay, right, very frustrating. Um, yes, true, but um, what can you do beyond that? I mean, like, um, if, yes, if you can't buy uh, with uh, the allocation given for your research funding, and especially for young researchers, I know you, um, young researchers, you face um, the frustration of getting a very limited source because you are still consider um, early career, okay? So when you go for like bidding for your projects and so forth, you might lose out to the more senior researchers, okay? Actually, it's just the track record. It's just the experience. 
one day all of you will be there. Okay, right now you are still very young. You still, uh, you still have more time to climb up. But, um, but the thing is, um, your KPI you still have to achieve. So, with the limited, with the scarce uh, funding, what can you do? What what you can what can you do instead of like saying say for example uh the dagger instead of like buying uh, equipment perhaps you can source around in um okay maybe in your lab or your research team there is no such equipment how about um in um from the central facilities or even like uh other faculties okay Maybe you can collaborate in UM itself. You can collaborate with uh, researchers from other faculties. Even like say, for example, in this room here, who knows um, the one the, the one equipment that you need? Perhaps some of our friends might have the equipment in their lab. Okay. Well, let's some... say the equipment. I I just uh would uh -huh. like to justify a little bit here. Yeah. Uh, okay. Our institute is very old, and mm -hmm. some of the equipment that we have has already broken and they cannot be used and uh, if my student need to actually use this particular equipment yes we can collaborate but you have to understand that some of our samples need to be kept properly mm. at one place and then if I mm. collaborate with un other university it would be difficult but if mm. I collaborate with UM, means my student will have to transfer the samples from my institute maybe to another uh, research center, maybe <coughs> just very far away and the samples may be gone on the way mm -hmm. there. So there are so many things to be considered, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not really just that we want to buy equipment. If we can actually mm -hmm. collaborate and not to buy anything, we would like that because again like let's say 50k can be used for many other things but mm. if a young researcher without any equipment in the lab is also not a really good thing when we bring in collaborators you know when we bring in mm. collaborators when i when i bring my collaborator to my lab they were like wow you just have five pets how mm. would people actually trust us if that is what we have in our lab yeah so these are all the things that actually um have to think carefully before asking us to just collaborate i cannot always <laughs> bring people to research center you know that is not okay. my lab my lab is in my institute and hmm. even just simple very simple items that we need we are not we, we are not allowed to get it so it's actually quite difficult i think medical and also engineering colleagues here face the same thing i mean the young ones i'm okay. sure those seniors with i heard with many hir grants they have no problems because they could purchase equipment back then <laughs> yeah. but for us with a new lab without anything and you ask us to collaborate i have uh, people from let's say us coming to my lab and then look at mm. my lab oh my god it's so empty so <laughs> so this this kind of thing you know how how would okay. we the young researchers can actually ask people to trust us to trust our proposal to trust what we can deliver when we show nothing to them mm. when we bring them to the lab this is what my concern would be about i don't know about others i just speak for myself All but right. uh, uh, i think somehow equipment there there should be a way for us to purchase some equipment although yes it's available maybe in some hmm. other research centers in um but we have a team and let's say we really cannot have that equipment within our team we should be allowed to purchase it in some way i think the research management team should think about this you know because we really get the money <laughs> we get frgs you just need to help us a little bit by letting us to move some of our money mm -hmm. here and there so that we can get what we want oh, it, at okay. the end of the day we want to get it to do research right we are not getting it to just put it there so hmm. i hope that uh, okay uh, Dr. Aga, uh, help right. to do this yeah 
Maybe um, this is not the proper channel to to act. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but the yeah. thing is, this is what my concern is hmm. about about equipment and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks seriously, for- this is this is not the proper channel. Uh, but uh, I I understand your frustration. Uh, yeah. The, so the collaboration, right? Uh, when we talk about collaboration, uh, it's not necessarily means external collaboration. Collaboration uh, here means that um, outside of your um, the norm, your your own team. Okay, think about like multidisciplinary collaboration with um, yes other research center, other faculties, or even in like uh, other groups in your own faculty. The kind of collaboration. Then, then we will have like multiple names on the paper, like let's say twenty names, and then UM is going to cut our KPI just because we have many names on the paper. <laughs> okay. Um, right. Um, Again, not a proper channel. Well, we have many yeah. concerns, you know. But anyway, life goes on. It's okay. You can continue <laughs> your. <laughs> I think that uh, uh, this one, right? Uh, you should ask uh, during the town hall meeting. Uh, we know, did. Like, yeah. But it's not Bian's. <laughs> uh, I, I can't help in that because um, I was just a repertoire uh, for the, the fifth town hall for entrepreneurship on, uh, on like uh, engagement with outside, all right, the fifth one. So the rest, because this is actually out of my control as well, I, I can't say anything. Um, I understand your frustration. So um, perhaps when there is a available channel, you can bring this up to the, to- uh, the management. Or maybe through like you know like some seniors uh, in your in your lab or in your faculty to bring it to escalate the the issues up. Okay. All right. So yeah. Um. Sorry about that, but I understand. Um. I'm not sure if uh, others uh, from faculty, other faculty for early career um researchers. Do you have, do you face like something similar like what the Aga mentioned earlier? Anyone from other faculties? Totally, yes, okay, all right. Yeah, but uh, seriously, I cannot help to solve that. What I can do, right, is just to discuss with my colleague and see whether this can be brought to the attention for, um, you know, for, for the top management. Common issue, mm-hmm. okay. So everyone face the same problem. Hello. Um, how about others? Anyone else would like to share? All of you face the same problem of having difficulty in like uh, use usage using the grant. Um, I think my my issue is a little bit different, but uh, mm-hmm. because I study as uh, social science, so I don't really need need you know the new equipment. But for mm-hmm. the young researcher, they need the grant. But you know there is a lot. There is not much many of uh, opportunity to get a re- grant mm-hmm. for young researcher. So I uh, so the university should uh, have their BKP um, grant. Now no no more BKP, but mm-hmm. I think I was their last person to get the BKP grant. Okay, so they should open <laughs> BKP. Right. I'm not sure um, because yeah this one right is like say uh, it's also not the right channel but uh, um, if if uh, among our participants let me see I think um, Dr. Nadia, Dr. Nadia are you there? Hello Dr. Nadia? Right I'm trying to find if there is any uh, from the central office, um, any management team from the central office that can um, help to, you know, like um, maybe capture and like uh, compile this thing. Um, but yes, it's actually uh, the best uh, platform is during uh, the town hall session. Okay, 
So if I'm not sure if there is any, um, try to see whether there is any uh, way you can give your feedback. But because uh, the whole university right now, um, we are undergoing transformation plan. We are, we are trying to implement all the strategies that has been shared during the town hall session. So from time to time, I guess um, there you will see, um, you know, like in your email, asking for some feedbacks and um, because how they want to do the transformation plan this round is really uh, engaging, engaging with all the researchers uh, internally and also even like the transformation plan engaging with external parties as well how we can have a new direction for the whole university to move uh, further so um perhaps in that you know if there is like um if asked for feedback uh, yeah you can share your feedback during that kind of um um you know, like the emails or anything all right um to submit your request and so forth okay so um, I'm very sorry I can't help that much uh, because um, it's out of my control. It's out beyond my, my role as well. Okay, even though I'm working in uh, the um, I'm working under the, the whole research uh, central office, uh, the research management side. Um, but because my main role is on the industry liaison, so I can't help out this much. All right. Okay, so we will move on to the next thing. Okay. No worries, Dr. Aga. <laughs> I guess I give you a chance uh, to voice out your concern. Okay. So the next uh, activity that we will be doing, okay, output, outcomes, and impact. So this is a poll. Um, because I tried to put it in uh, true poly, but I have some, uh, I face some difficulties while so uh, trying to manage with uh, teams. So what we will do here, um, you can just type in the chat. Okay, in the chat. Okay, so um, um, the statement, a training program resulted in 95 graduates. A training program resulted in 95 graduates. Is this an output or an outcome or impact? Okay, you can type your answer in the chat room. Output, outcome, or impact for the first statement. Training program resulted in 95 graduates. Output, output, all right, output. How about others? The one outcome, are you sure? Mm -hmm. um, others? All our audience here? What is this? Our training program resulted 95 graduates. Output, output, okay. The rest? All right. All right, output. So majority, almost like ninety percent of you answered output. Yeah. So yes, Dr. Wong. Um, the answer is actually output because um, looking back, right? You know, remember our um the logic model. Okay, the logic model. Let me go back to the logic model. What is the definition of output, outcome, and impact? So output is actually the uh, usually the quantity. So when we look at that statement, right, 95 uh, graduates, it's actually the quantity, the number of uh, graduates from the activities. Okay, outcome that impact, right? We'll go back to the activity now. Mm. Okay, so congratulations. Have a tap on your shoulder for, uh, for being correct in answering the first one. Now we move to the next one. Graduating from a training program leading to a better quality of life for the individual. What is this? Output, outcome, or impact? What do you think?
Okay, impact outcome, impact outcome, outcome. All right, now we see some confusion, right? Outcome impact. Hmm. So, which one should be the the correct answer then? Whether it's impact or outcome. So let's us hear from those who answer outcome. Okay, um, those who answer outcome. Dr. Amy, can you unmute yourself? What's the justification? Hello, Dr. Yeah. Amy. Um, so I guess the way I saw it initially was uh, thinking about upcount as some a uh, uh, shorter term. Uh huh. Um, Are you sure this is short term result? Well, actually, no. I guess now that I think about it, uh, uh -huh. better quality of life in the long term is probably yeah. more an impact. Uh, yeah. But I guess I was um, I, when I thought about it because this is focusing on a single individual. So um, I would imagine that when you're thinking about impact, you know, it goes beyond an individual. I don't know. I, so I guess I'm sort of divided. But now that I say talk about it, I probably am leaning a little bit more towards impact than outcome. But okay. yeah, that's my thought. <laughs> All right. So yeah, uh, because, okay, we, we are open for discussion. So um, there is no p penalty for um, answer uh, or, or even like reward if you answer correct or if you uh, make a mistake. It's okay. So we learn from each other. That's why I want you to um, have a justification. So based on Dr. Amy's uh, justification earlier, um, what other things if you are, your answer is outcome? Do you agree with what Dr. Amy um, suggested? Let me see. Um, okay, Dr. Dr. Shina? Um, I, I think it's an outcome more than an impact. Impact is perhaps l larger. This is more an individual. Um, but uh, if we look at the context in the individual, it can be an impact for the, the particular in individual. Do you agree with me? Um, uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, okay. So impact, right? Yes, uh, impact when we talk about impact is like the community or the society or, or anyone. But impact, okay, in this statement, for that particular individual, it is an impact, right? If um, uh, it's uh, leading to a better quality of life and then if you are arguing about it's only one person, but because of what the um, quality of life, this particular individual can help to, to raise the status of the family, say for example, right? Yes, I um, now now you put it in that way. Yes, it it is um, more leaning towards an impact. Ah, yeah. So yeah, because usually um, every time when I do this activity with um different group of uh, participants, we always argue about the output, outcome, and impact, especially for the outcome and impact. Okay. So, but it's okay um, because everything that um, we do is like true um, justification. So sometimes also I want to know like how from, from your point of view, how do you view it? Okay, so actually um, uh, for, for this uh, particular activities, uh, for number two, graduating from a training program leading to a better quality of life for the individual is actually an impact you know, for the individual. Perhaps uh, the confusion part is uh, when I put for the individual. Okay, if I didn't put the for the individual, uh, graduating from a training program leading to a better quality of life, I guess um, all of you will have answered uh, impact, uh, if not because of the confusion, right? Yeah, Dr. Sheena and also yes. Dr. Amy? Okay, all right, no worries. Okay, so let's go to the third statement. All right, the third statement is, white paper, white paper, or the study, you by particular effort. Okay, so, um, okay, let's put it in this training program. Perhaps from that training program, a white, uh, a white paper or even like a research conducted because of the training program. What do you think? Is it an output, outcome, or an impact? I'm giving everyone some time to think about it. 
white paper or a study you by um, particular effort. Output, uh, the the admin and the Tashina, are you sure it's output? Because I mentioned this just now, right? That particular effort is actually from the training. Is it an output for a study? Okay, maybe I will get um, those who answer outcome. Uh, Dr. Core, would you like to justify why you choose outcome instead of output? Um, Dr. Core? Or uh, Sokmen? I, um... Yes. Why I choose? Outcome. Yeah, outcome. It is. I don't think it is a, an output. Okay. Uh huh. All right. So the justification is just uh because you don't feel it is an output, is it? Yeah. All right. Okay, Doctor Fazril. Hmm. You are really sitting on the bench, yeah, Doctor Fazril. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I feel like, you know, if, if I said um, why I put that is like, if you know, you work on a research project, it would be an output. But mm -hmm. if it was more like a random thing, like you just suddenly had it. And um, mm -hmm. they're like, as I said, we have this, this training. It was never part of a goal to produce mm. something. And then you just had a thought, then that would be mm. like an outcome. <laughs> okay. <laughs> put it together, you know. Mm, okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, okay. Uh, actually, when I when I initially put up this uh, statement, um, the the statement is actually uh, falls under outcome. Yeah, outcome because um, well, okay. I will use the theory um, theoretical uh, justification. Let's go back to what is um outcome and uh, what is. Output. What's the difference? Okay, so if we look at the non-logic model, all right, on this uh, explanation, so the outcome is actually the benefit or the changes for the participant during or after the project, and usually it's like a change, like say for example, better project, increased skill, and so forth. Okay, but then output is the volume of work accomplished by the project itself. Actually, what Dr. Fazrio um, put there, right, is correct. <laughs> yeah, you uh, in a way of explaining output and outcome. So output is something that um, you get it um, after you have done um, the activities. That will be the output. And output is uh, quantifiable, okay? But outcome is more like um, the benefits or something that you have not planned it, something that just come up. Okay, something that is like a change of, so for the participation, right, when we look back at this uh, segment, okay, a white paper or a study, a study, a new study you by doing the training program. So that is why um, it is an outcome instead of an output. Okay, so uh, agree with me or you, you think it's the other way around? I'm open for um, for suggestion and for your comments too. Do you agree? Or you think it's no 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 it should be output still? Hello? We are still digesting. Uh, right, Doctor. Mm? Okay. Right, let me go back. Hmm. So 
Dr. Shina and also Dr. Amy? Hey, no, wait, Dr. Shina. Okay, yeah, Dr. Shina and Dr. Amy. Uh, this one you put output, is it? So after the yeah. explanation, would you agree? Because there's, uh, the, the, there's no, um, um, the, the word quantifiable. What is the word quantifiable here? Mm -hmm. Quantifiable yeah. is the output, right? Uh, yes. Uh -huh. So we, we can count the white paper as... Um, okay, uh, now I got your, okay, the confusion <laughs> here. Yeah. All right. Okay, how about the, the Amy? I, yeah, maybe I don't quite follow your explanation, Dr. Bong, because I mean, uh -huh. my, uh, my personal thought is that, you know, if when you document, for example, you know, I, I mean here, white paper, I'm assuming it's usually like a policy related, if I'm not mistaken. Um, mm -hmm. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I would actually see that, you know, as a tangible output. I mean, I'm okay. not sure about the explanation about tar effort targeted or uh, random. I don't quite follow that. Lah. But okay. I mean, uh, from, uh, from if I, you know, am recording uh, my research um, yeah. output, I mm -hmm. would put uh, a white paper that I produce from my work as an output and not really an outcome. All right. But uh, that's actually, my yes. Yeah. Yes, uh, you have uh, some point there, uh, Dr. Amy. Um, yeah, uh, if white paper alone uh, is like quantifiable, like what Dr. Shina said, it's like one paper or two paper, uh, it's still an outcome, uh, output of whatever study. But how about the study? <laughs> or maybe, uh, okay, there, I, I guess there is some uh, confusion as well because uh, sometimes, right, um, because the statement is not very clear. So after this, when I, whenever I do the, this kind of similar activity, I will try to put like a very specific statement. So, um, but there is also like pros and cons. The reason why um, I put it uh, a bit blurry is that uh, we have this kind of session where um, there is interaction and justification. Because I want to know, like, I um, want to learn from all of you um, to know whether you really um, know the definition, you know how to differentiate between the output, outcome, and impact. Okay? Yeah, so yes, um, it depends on how you. Um, how do you interpret it? Like what uh, Dr. Amy has mentioned, if you interpret it as uh, a document itself, the white paper as a document, yes, it can be output. How are you going to uh, um, interpret the study then? The study yield? I guess if let's say, uh, if we ignore that uh, white paper and it's just like a study yield by the particular effort. I think um, the Dr. Bo oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Go <laughs> ahead. It's, it's too general. That's why it's it's hard to pinpoint you because you put slash there. You know, okay. so white paper or study. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure what what was meant by study yield. Uh, I was wondering whether study yield itself is like the noun or is it study yielded by or um. Is the yield here a verb or not? Anyway, I'm I'm being um I'm I'm. All right, right. I, I, I get what you mean. Yeah, yeah whether it's actually um uh, is like a result, right? The study. Yeah, result, yeah, correct. Mm, or yeah. Uh, it's actually uh, a verb, which is a new new project coming from uh. Your correct. Right? Yeah. Yes. If it's a verb. Yes, Dr. Amy. Yeah, correct. Yeah, whether it's a uh, in, in this context, I, 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 is it a verb or you know, is a study yield like a, a, a noun itself mm. um, by a particular effort? I guess if you, yeah. if uh, um, if if in the context of a study yield, if it's like a, a follow up study, yeah. uh, you know, that you conduct, you know, after I guess you know, um, a particular effort, maybe like an initial um, exploratory study. Then yes, mm -hmm. I would say that you know this would be an outcome. But if it okay. is a an um, if it's like research results um, mm -hmm. by a particular effort, um, as in like the use is a noun, uh -huh. I still think that it's an output. output. I mean, my All personal right. opinion, right. yeah, because it's directly yeah. coming from uh, you know your your research product, your research output, like the results itself. I mean, I would okay. say it's an output. Yeah. Yeah. 
So yes, um, I think uh, from the explanation, right, Dr. Amy, uh, you are very clear with the definition of uh, the output and the outcome. It's just sometimes uh, like what you mentioned. Um, yes, I agree with Dr. Shina as well. Um, the, the example here uh, very, is too general. So frankly speaking, um, this call, right, uh, all this statement, um, this is the first round that I put it. I mean, like from based on uh, my previous uh, example, I didn't use this. This was the first thing. So yes, um, I do notice that there is something uh, from, from my side, the room of improvement as well. Um, so the next round, I, will, I won't put like two general things. Okay, thank you everyone for your, um, your comments and also um, the justification. That is what I like about uh, having these activities. Okay, the last one, number of graduates who get a job and keep it for a particular period. Last one. I think this is also quite confusing, right? Okay, outcome. How about others? Mm -hmm. Outcome. Any anyone who think um, other um, choice? Okay, outcome. Everyone agree with outcome or do you have like other suggestion? Perhaps you think, no, this should be output. Yes, uh, thus far in the chat, I only have like four, four, um, <laughs> the first drill. Hmm. No, um, no, no, you cannot for this statement you can't stand on the on the bench already. <laughs> yes, you are complicating things already. Yeah, just um it's straightforward, like okay, number of graduates who get a job and keep it for a particular period. Anyone else that you like uh, who like to try? What do you think about this? This is this is the last uh, uh, the last question for output outcome and impact. Mm -hmm. Outcome, okay. So can I guess that most of you agree with outcome? I don't see. Okay, the third fast real case is a bit <laughs> out of. Or you are just trying to to make things uh, livelier in uh, in the session, Dr. Fazril. Yeah, outcome. Okay. All right. All right. Final. Okay. Outcome. Yes. Uh. Yes. It is outcome because um this one for uh, it like is um we are looking at who get the job after the training, okay? So it's actually the outcome. So uh, I mean like um, resulted in this, um, the graduates, okay? That would be the output, but they, because of the training, they get a job, okay? The outcome, all right? It's just the final, the last sentence, uh, I mean like uh, the second part of it, keep it for a particular period of time, just trying to confuse things, okay? <laughs> yeah, all right. So, everyone, any questions about this? Output, outcome, and impact? Everyone okay with that? Because after, after this outcome, uh, no, output, outcome, and impact, uh, we will move on to um, another section 
which I think it might be a little bit, a little bit only, a little bit heavy, heavier. Okay, but it's very, very useful for all of you, especially young researchers, because you will be needing all this uh, in order to write a better proposal, um, no matter where, uh, no matter it, whether it is um, uh, a very direct one will be your IIRG, okay, uh, IIRG, the in Interdisciplinary Impact Oriented uh, Research Grant, or even uh, external grants. Okay, external grants uh, you might need uh, to provide the next thing. Okay, shall we move on? Shall we move on, everyone? Or oh, you want the tech five before we move on? Yes, yes. All right, Ken. All right, Ken. Okay, so I shall move on then. Other uh, writing impact. Okay. <laughs> So, writing impact, the do's and the don'ts, okay, some of the rules of writing impact. So, what are the rules here? Do's, um, when you write about impact, be clear about the problem and the contribution, okay, you can use the active language and structure, okay, directional impact, who are your stakeholders and what is the engagement and justify the scale, quantifiers and so forth, okay, the time frame, all right, there is, um, you, you know, like when usually when we are doing some uh, strategic planning, uh, we use the SMART goal. Okay, S M A R T. Try Google what, what the SMART goals uh, refers to. Or if you are keen, you can just uh, type here in um, the chat what does it mean by SMART? Okay, the SMART goals. I believe it's not the first time um, you hear about this, the SMART goals. Any, any takers uh, for this uh, challenge? What is SMART? Aha, the term, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time best. Yes, correct. That is the SMART goal. So when we are writing about impact, okay, that will answer, uh, the SMART will answer these uh, do's. Good. Specific, you have the clear problem and what is the clear contribution of the impact. All right, measurable, okay. Um, so it's like justified to the scale, the quantifiers, attainable, something that is, uh, being, is uh, possible to achieve. You have the directional impact, okay. There is a clear path, the methods and dependency. And uh, relevant, okay, is a realistic, is relevant. Time based is the time frame, okay, directly resulting from project or long term. Okay, that will be the do's when writing impact. And what you shouldn't or you should avoid uh, while writing impact is rely on passive dissemination and academic roots on this. Okay, impact because um the definition for impact is beyond academia. So don't rely on the uh, passive dissemination like what just now when we mentioned. Impact is not about visibility. Impact is not about um, yourself being invited for interviews or things like that. And impact is also certainly not about putting it in, in uh, repositories, right? So um, passive dissemination, be woolly, presume available uh, or use, uh, assume readers accept research will solve problem. Okay. So these are some of the some sort of like rules. Okay, this was actually coming out from the discussion like I shared earlier when I had with uh, Julie, um, Dr. Julie Bailey uh, from from now she's in UCL. So okay, um, all those things are uh, when we discuss about it, right? Writing impact. What are the do's and what are the don'ts? So this was actually uh, just a brainstorming of uh, okay. So for example, non-directional or scattergun. Okay, scattergun is like just uh, whatever it is, I just put in, okay, um, but impact should be very, very, um, you know, directional, you know what you want, okay, and um, or for, for the last one, arrogant or track of uh, past glories association, uh, well, okay, that's just some of the don'ts, but um, what we want here, right, is the do's, that you can follow some of the do's in uh, writing your impact, 
So the dots is just like uh, some reminder uh, when uh, some reminder only. Okay, it's not not to say it's a regulation or it's a rule to follow, but it's just a reminder. Okay. So research. Um, okay. So right the impact to co-produce the pathway to impact. All right. And okay, so what is this all about? <clears throat> you do your research, you do dissemination, your dissemination might be uptake, okay, and finally implementation. So the research uh, benefits, okay, uh, research benefits is what the new knowledge produced or deeper uh, partnership and um, new methods, new tools and so forth. This resulted from the research itself. Okay, the, the dissemination benefit is like, okay, publication, conference, and so forth, um, IP, awareness, yeah. And the uptake validation of um, research, the policy, new research question, contextualization of research, technology license and um, best practices. Okay, then implementation benefits, um, research informed policy, and so forth and impact citizen serve uh, citizen serve uh, the social, social economical environmental um, all those things are uh, media and public awareness so i'm not sure how am i supposed to try try to explain these whole things um let me see how should i put it in um okay so basically the all your research right Whatever you do, whichever steps, uh, stages you are in, whether it's at the research stage, whether it's at the dissemination stage or the uptake stage and so forth, okay, all this will produce some, um, some output. Okay, all of this will have some output. But what is the impact that will build towards the impact is actually from here onwards, the uptake of the benefits, all right? The uptake, um, um, which is like whatever you have done, your result, your finding is being taken. And finally, it's in being implementation. Okay, that will be the part that um, is like moving towards the impact. But nonetheless, from the research, this is all the way until the implementation, you will have a pathway. So remember earlier when I talked about like what is impact, impact, the pathway is actually the engagement processes. Start from the research itself, you are already building the pathway to impact. Because if your research is very in a uh, very silo, um, in silo, and you don't do any engagement, so you won't be able to do uh, to build towards the impact part. Okay, so that's why um, uh, when we talk about like okay, you all this okay. You see, on this uh, blue circle here, the policy, the practice partner. So from the research, from even the start of the research onwards, you are already starting to engage with stakeholders. So for example, uh, maybe we can use like Dr. Noor's example of um, the religion and sport performance. Okay, so the sports uh, um, for her study, I guess, I guess um, that um, the participants of the survey will be the sportsmen who are also the beneficiary of the result of the findings. Okay, and the sports um, sports personnel, the athletes, they are they in her research in Dr. North's research. In this part, at the beginning of the research, they already start engaging with the, the athletes, the stakeholders. And when it's being implemented towards the end, after you know the findings has come up, these same stakeholders, the, I mean the stakeholders who are generally athletes, will be also, you know, when you implement, okay, yeah, uh, from the finding, um, Dr. Noor found that uh, the find, um, religion is really um, helps in the performance of um, the athletes. So what's next? Maybe the implementation will be like, Okay, so from now onwards, all the athletes should have one religion. I mean, I like, should believe in uh, in God or something. It's okay, just some wild guess. Science is sometimes we can we can be more creative and think it from a different perspective. All right, agree with me? 
Okay, or not? Up to you here. Hello, everyone. I'll still, uh, are you still here with me? Yes, okay. All right. So, um, I hope the the example of like uh, using Dr. North's uh, research is like, um, you understand what, what it means by co produce the pathway to impact, yeah? Okay, Dr. Aga, thank you. All right. So, next. Other impact summary. Okay, so for this impact summary, right, um, in the teams, in teams, let me go out. Okay, so go to this uh, section where, to the left side here in teams, okay, in files. And in the past, I have already shared the class materials. So you have this impact summary planning sheet. Feel free to download because if um, I don't recommend you to write on here because uh, the file is being shared to everyone. You can download and um, in your file folder. So say for example, if I open it, right? Okay. All right, everyone. Oh, hold on. Let me shift this to the side. Okay, can I? Okay. So this is the impact summary planning sheet. It's a, actually a draft of uh, impact summary and pathway to impact uh, to help you how to build um, the impact beyond academia. So there are some columns here that you can start filling up. Okay, now think back to your own research whatever you are doing, your own research project, use this column to help you to write the impact summary. So when, when we ask, right, um, if say, for example, if you, are, um, you want to apply for a grant and you are asked to provide the impact summary, this is actually an exercise to help you already. So remember um, when we talk about like what, to, uh, what is the do's, the rules for writing um, um, impact summary, so this is a exercise. Who will be your who will um be your beneficiary? Who you, will your research benefit? But bear in mind this is non-academic beneficiary. So maybe you can list down. Say for example, um, Dr. Amy, uh, yours is on the fisheries or wait, fisheries or uh, the blue ocean, right? Um, yeah, something like that. <laughs> uh, wait, blue ocean. Okay. I can't remember already. I was like very confused already. Um, oh, I thought your group done the blue ocean, the one with uh, oh, it's fly water, fly mouth, fly mouth uh, research. Yeah, it's it's. Um, I think we were exploring blue carbon. Um, oh, blue carbon. Okay, carbon. sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my fault, my fault. I can't no, remember, no, no, but no. I, I no at least I remember the blue. Yes, you're right. Very good. <laughs> okay. So, right, Dr. Amy, uh, would you like to share about your project? Because I think your project is very interesting. And um, with the group here, uh, actually, Dr. Amy, I, I, I'm quite surprised if, when you join me <laughs> this uh, workshop. Because for me, right, you have, you have um, all the knowledge for all these things already. Um, not quite. I would say that um, I am learning uh, by doing. And okay. I think that um, after being involved, you know, in uh, some uh, recent, uh, you recently concluded and, you know, ongoing uh, UK projects, I think I'm understanding this process a little bit better. Mm. Um, but that I, I think, you know, understanding in theory is quite different from, you know, uh, learning how to apply it in uh, projects and, you know, um, especially when you're working uh, in projects that are quite... Um, interdisciplinary in nature okay. um, thinking about recording uh, meaningful you know research impacts or you know uh, co-production mm. of our pathway uh, sounds very fancy on paper like, but when you when you think about actually doing it or how you implementing or how you record these things is uh, yes. a lot less straightforward la. so of I course. would say that that's why know, that's why I'm helping yeah. uh, all of you by providing uh, this uh, sheet mm. this uh, paper so, uh, and I simplified already into columns. Uh, this was also actually, um, because um, Dr. Amy, you work with your UK counterparts, right? So I think you are quite, they, 
perhaps they have shared with you. I'm not sure this is from UK or from Australia, but it's actually similar thing. Uh, yeah. So, Dr. Amy, um, for your project, for the 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 <laughs> the blue um, object, sorry. Yeah. Uh -huh. Blue carbon is just a one, one small part. So we were um so the project title is actually a uh, nexus action for mangroves in Selangor. So okay. the uh, project focuses on uh, how to actually uh, make uh, mangroves. You know uh, how do I, how do we promote a more sustainable uh, mangrove conservation? And then uh, blue carbon opportunities is a one angle to promote the uh, mangrove conservation. Okay, um, so, so yeah. yes, Dr. Amy, based on your project, right, the um, promoting the sustainable mangrove um, growth uh, in Selangor. So the man uh, mangrove ecosystem, I guess. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's, um, all of us, right, in this room, we will do this together. Okay, okay. is it okay, Dr. Amy? I will use your project as an example. Sure. Okay, so who will be your research beneficiary? Those that will benefit from my research, um, mm. I would say the um, state forestry department, mm -hmm. um, the forestry mm -hmm. department. Yeah. Um, what we hope also is uh, for local communities to benefit from the research. Okay. Um, one of the elements we are looking at is, you know, um, opportunities for business and our uh, private sectors to uh, be involved uh, in our research. So I'm not okay. sure that they are going to be direct beneficiaries. <laughs> But uh -huh. I guess we're helping to do the research, you know, that can help them to see how they can uh, pro, uh, uh, invest better in uh, mangrove uh, conservation. So I guess um, they are also our beneficiaries. So generally, uh, local communities, um, state government authorities, uh, local uh, municipal mm. Uh, mm. Um, councils and um, uh, uh, private and uh, business sector. So those are um, okay. generally, yeah, the beneficiaries. Hmm. All right. So, okay. Based on that, right, um, just now uh, Dr. Amy mentioned about like um, the local council, um, the governance, the local uh, communities. So what is the benefit to them uh, specifically? Okay. The local communities is very clear. It's like uh, maybe increasing, uh, helping with their status, the uh, quality of life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. How about the council or the forestry ministry, uh, the ministry and the governance uh, sector? Yeah. So uh, one of the um, work that we are doing, you know, is uh, doing a policy analysis, um, identifying uh, the gaps, you know, in the existing policy for protection of mangroves. So the work that we do, you know, will provide um, um, policy recommendations uh, for the um, state forestry on what they can um, uh, do to change, you know, um, existing policies, for example. And the other thing that uh, one of the uh, projected output from the work is also to determine um, areas that are suitable uh, for uh, replanting. So that's mm. also going to be a uh, useful information for the state forestry department. So that's OK. Um, yeah. All right. So based on the short conversation between um, myself and Dr. Amy, everyone, um, yeah, we actually have helped to fill up the first two columns, the who and the what, All right? And also, I think uh, Dr. Amy also mentioned that, like, uh, you know, like, um, it's actually with this uh, template, I hope it's um, clear enough. So, um, we don't have much time. We have only like half an hour left uh, because the half an hour, the final half an hour, I will be concentrating for um, the stakeholder engagement. So um, what we can do, right, with this um, template, planning sheet, I hope you can feel, start filling in your own uh, research. And with that, right, you have some information on how you can write about your pathway to impact and write about your impact summary. Okay, everyone? Can I get some response? If you want to unmute yourself. Yeah, I um, I have had uh, a few times when I had to write something similar, but I didn't mm. have the help of a template. So I would say that uh, actually, Dr. Bong, the, the template that you shared is really uh, quite practical and useful. So um, yeah, yeah, because this, is, uh, this template yeah. is um, to help um, you, the researchers in your team, you can start um, brainstorming. And when you brainstorm, right, you can put down all the things. 
Say for example, just now, if uh, suddenly when you are thrown uh, and asked to write about the impact summary, all of us will be blank. Um, you know, like your your mind frozen and suddenly you have a blank mind. You don't know what to write about. But when you have a template like this, so you are just answering, so who? Uh, what is the uh, who will be the beneficiary? What is the benefit? And how are you going to share your research through publication, through newspaper, through interviews, through anything else? Or and then when and the resources and finally how we we'll know whether these activities have been useful. So the last part is actually the evidence. Okay, when you talk about the impact, right? One of the things that uh, is important is that those impact has the evidence. Okay, uh, Dr. Fazril, all right. Um, yeah, okay, sure, uh, I'll see you. I hope to see you around, um, but <laughs> uh, forgive me if I cannot recognize you. Yeah, uh, if, if let's say if you meet with me or um, if you send me an email or call me up um, and want to get some assistance from our office in the future. So you can just um, say, oh, uh, you have joined uh, this class. Because I've I have uh, do a collaboration with EDEC for the past a few years, so I can't remember exactly who and who. All right, but like Dr. Amy, because I know her um, when we we had a we had some um, communication previously. All right, yes. So with this template, right? Um, I hope that it will help to uh, everyone um, to write about your impact, to start thinking about your impact, and uh, from there you know what is your impact objective. All right? Everyone, okay? okay? Let me go back to the... Okay, Dr. No? All right, Dr. Aga, no worries. You just miss out, um, for those who are going to leave, um, you just miss the last uh, 30, uh, 30 minutes, the half and last half an hour. Okay, so this one, I won't do the activity here. Um, you can refer to the impact uh, summary planning sheet and fill in the columns. So the tell me, I hope uh, it helps you with your reporting for the impact then. <laughs> Thank you, yes, mm -hmm. that is okay. a big part to write. No worries, Dr. Terrence. Okay, so finally, uh, will be the last part. Uh, okay, before I go to the end, so it's actually the same thing. Um, target audience, all the uh, question, the who, what, where, when, why, how, and our aim is to write. Okay, the plan language writing to write for a larger um audience. So capture what is most significant and summarize the main outcome. Okay, when we talk about the summary of the main outcome, with the help from the template of um, the impact summary, you have already done this part. So it's like, you're like, um, the thing is very, um, um, it helps you with um, you telling the story about your research to a layman, okay, to everyone else. All right, so while writing a plan language summary, or um, article or so forth. So for example, if you are asked to write um, in a magazine of what you have found, of what you have, um, you, you have done from your research findings in a magazine or in a newspaper, some of the things that you need to be um, aware of is that please uh, write a very short title, a lay summary and the impact statement. So the impact statement comes from the impact summary earlier. And avoid jargons and express in clear, easily understood terms. Okay, so that is quite straightforward. All right, uh, so this uh, impact, um, I mean, the plan language writing is actually the same activity with the impact summary. Okay, I won't take a break, so I will continue to the last part partnership with uh, stakeholders because we only have like half an hour but yes we can finish it in time all right partnership with stakeholders okay so uh yes this um slide is obtained from uh, academy science malaysia so it is um a report for the new economic opportunities in uh, science technology innovation based industry 
to serve uh, emerging uh, markets. So this was an uh, analysis done by ASM in 2017. So what is the uh, happens in the university? The R&D. You have the publication, you have the citation, you have the patents. And in real world out there, the businesses, the industry, they have all this. Risk averse, secrecy, exclusivity, the profit oriented, non-collaborative, not homegrown technology and so forth. So what is breaking here? What is the gap here? It's a collaborative network. Okay. Um, if you remember when we share about um, UMI's our office, uh, industry and community engagement, our um, objective, our main aim is to help to bridge this gap, this bridge through a collaborative network with shared vision, lower risk of and barriers, a talent pool, knowledge intensification, value creation in priority areas and so forth. Okay, so that is what we hope and we aim. Okay, and we hope that one day we have a complete bridge from um, the lab, from the university, from academia, and the research done directly to the businesses. And we are actually seeing um, um, some, you know, we are actually seeing like uh, maybe some, some sticks here already, uh, though it's not completed yet, but there's still a long way to go. So, collaborative network in innovation. Okay, right. Um, now I would like to share with you. Yesterday I shared about the MOSP. Okay, so I show this question to the audience. MOSP. What is it? What does it stand for? Those who attended yesterday, do you remember MOSP? There is a platform. Anyone? Would you like to unmute yourself? Or if you don't want to unmute, you can type on the chat. Anyone? MOSP? Yes, Karen, Malaysia Open Science Platform. Thank you, Karen. All right. So to refresh your memory about what we have uh, learned yesterday, uh, when I talk about on the topic of um, what's the topic already? Um, open open access, open access. When I talk about like um, going as open as uh, you can, and also uh, the Sherpa Romeo, I shared about MOSP Malaysia Open Science Platform. So. Academic Science also has another initiative, which is iConnect. And this iConnect is actually uh, a collaborative network in innovation. So the aim is to create and nurture a conducive innovation ecosystem towards increasing disruptive uh, innovation. So iConnect, under iConnect, there is only four um, areas which is being identified at the moment. The halal supply chain, health and wellness, Okay, fintech and Islamic finances and industry 4.0. So, if any one of you, right, um, is, uh, this is actually what is happening around in Malaysia. If you are doing your research, so with this iConnect, it's a, actually a collaborative network. You will get some support like from the industry side, from the government side, you know, some, um, if, um, what I know that there has been just recently, um, there was a briefing about health and wellness and the iConnect. And this health and wellness is actually a collaboration between Academy Science Malaysia with uh, CRES. Okay, with CRES. So um, if any researchers is interested, what you can do is under um, CRES will provide some fund and ASM, the ministry side, also will have some funding. So um, if your research falls under this, and try to explore for iConnect initiative. Okay. All right. Move it. So academia industry partnerships. Um, we will talk about the stakeholders. The, who are the stakeholders when we talk about academia industry partnership? Uh, government, academia, the industry, and the community. So this is a quadruple helix, but now there is a new model for this helixes. So the um, the new model is actually a quintuple helix. What quintuple helix means that 
Um, the only dimension, the additional dimension for this uh, quadruple helix is that all this under the ecosystem of environment. Okay, so you can Google the quintuple helix on the definition. What is it about? Which means that whatever collaboration is being done, we consider about the ecosystem, the environment. All right. Okay. So um, this is one of the slides that usually when our office, we do some negotiation and mediation with the industry partners. So what are the things that uh, the spectrum of engagement that you can have with, um, you know, like through academia industry partnership? It can be as simple as, um, so starting from low hanging fruit, like program or event sponsorship, maybe companies or, um, you know, like the fund, um, foundation or association would like to sponsor some of your um, competition or maybe just a student program or um, that is the start of some small engagement and it can go uh, up to like internship immersion exchange you know you have your student attachment you can have your if you have a collaboration with the industry you can send your student for the internship and so forth and then moving on uh, for the spectrum we have a medium uh, engagement, medium level of engagement, whereby um, there is empowerment of student and staff, teaching and learning, um, student project, forums, you invite the industry partner as a panel for your um, webinars, workshop, and um, so forth. Then moving up the, um, the arrow, it will be a research collaboration. Okay, this is, maybe this is um, something familiar for all of you. Okay, the research collaboration, it can be a contract research, or commercialization, consultation. Okay, you might be uh, you might be doing some work, consultancy work with the industry partners. All right, and finally, for the spectrum of engagement um, under this academia industry partnership, it will be uh, something very sustainable through endowment and donation. Okay, so what's the mutual benefit uh, for collaboration? We are looking at. What are the impact to UM? So impact to UM through um, collaboration, right? Academia industry collaboration. Of course, first of all, funding. Then the graduate employability, academic reputation and so forth, and curriculum development. So um, for those of you, uh, in, uh, you know, like, um, I'm not sure if it applies to all the faculty, but there is a task force or a committee that uh, the curriculum review committee, some the, the, some of the um, faculty that I know, there is a specific community, um, the review committee, uh, which engage with um, industry players. So industry players will come, you know, like five, five years, once in every five years, to look at the curriculum um, for the teaching and learning and maybe to suggest uh, some changes or some improvement. That is where you will see some of the faculty. There is, um, you know, like a changing in the curriculum review. Okay, and because to suit um, what, is the, what is happening in the real world. Okay, so um, another impact is to the community through social economic, through health and well-being, through environment and sustainable, uh, sustainability, and finally education. And there is also impact directly to the industry partner via R&D, research and development, or um, new technologies, skill, and um, improve the profitability, improve uh, productivity. So of course, we are looking into like the SDG goal, the U United Nations, the 17 goals of uh, sustainability, and also the shared prosperity vision 2020, SPV 2020. What are the guiding principles? Right. So this is a diagram of the industry academia collaboration. Um, say for right, research, if it goes to the industry, okay, innovation to the industry, okay, education, university provides education. Our our um our model is uh, not model, our cap uh, capacity, uh, um, capital. Okay, we are rich of human capital because university, we train the students, we do, you know, like we teach the students and so forth. And this uh, education, it supplies the talent to the industry. All right. So 
So the research will transform into innovation to the industry and um, vice versa. Okay. Right. Um, okay, I think I will skip this uh, activity for the example and I will give you directly what are the examples of academia industry collaboration. Okay, basically, like what I mentioned, actually this one uh, from the spectrum earlier, I have already mentioned the graduate employability, um, some of the examples, research and development collaboration, and then there's a commercialization, uh, consultancy, innovation, all right? Okay, so what is, uh, what is the meaning, the definition of stakeholders? They are the individuals who are either affected by or responsible for the outcome of a project or initiative. Okay, so um, based on your own project, okay, I'm not sure what your projects are. Um, like, okay, from, from some of the participants here, I know some of you, uh, maybe you might have uh, projects like say, for example, Dr. Lee, uh, Dr. Lee's project on the health uh, apps, right, Dr. Lee? Dr. Lee, are you here? Yeah. Ah, okay. So um, who are your stakeholders then? Uh, uh, basically, uh, stakeholder, uh, we are looking into uh, UNICEF. Mayor Medical Center, eventually the, the, the apps. Yeah. I mean, it's actually the web based apps uh, we hope to incorporate into the UMMC uh, Medical Center. Yeah. Okay, so your stakeholders will be the patients who are wearing? Uh, yeah, as so a patient, because patient will be the one who paying to okay. sustain the system. Uh -uh. Yeah, all right. Uh, okay, so. The system will link to the hospital. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Dr. Lee. All right, so um, yes, um, so in Dr. Lee's uh, research, the stakeholders will be the patients, the individuals who are, um, they are affected by or responsible for the outcome. Okay, so what is the importance of stakeholder networking? To communicate the institutional vision and mission, share the output and impact, enable um, our academics and graduates to be connected and relevant. Create new partnerships for, for mutual beneficial. Okay. So who are your identified stakeholders at work? All right. Think about your research. And um, because earlier when we talk about, you know, we, we do that impact summary, there's a column on who are your stakeholders. So who are your stakeholders? Well, for this example, because this was, um, I, um, it was conduct, uh, this was like mentioned at work, but you can identify your stakeholders for research, okay, for your project. Okay, when you build um, a stakeholder relationship, try consider who the stakeholders are, what help do you need from the stakeholders, what does the stakeholder need from you, and are there any common objective, any potential barriers, and can these barriers be overcome, and what the uh, which team team member work with uh, will work with the stakeholders. So these are the some of the things of uh, thoughts. Okay, uh, what steps can you take uh, for a positive relationship and so forth? Okay, so um, stakeholder analysis. All right, for this part, maybe I will move to the metrics. It will be clearer here. So which stakeholder to engage? Okay, the two diagram here, the matrices, um, is actually the same thing. Uh, it's just that. The left hand side, right, is a more um, detailed explanation. So, say for example, if we are looking at this um, uh, corner here, okay, I'm trying to use something simplified uh, so that it's easy, easier for everyone to understand, okay, in a short time. If there is actually law interest or engagement issue, okay, um, and also um, there is actually law alignment uh, with approach. This kind of stakeholder you might want to consider to ignore or monitor. But if the stakeholder is showing a very high interest, they want to engage with you in your project and they are, they are willing to align with all your approach. These are the easy to reach target um, who will benefit significantly from the engagement. So what you do, you work in partnership, you reach out systematically 
in priority order. So you prioritize them and contact the first one in your list now. Okay. So that, um, which means that what you can do now, based on the stakeholder, once you list down your, all your stakeholder in your project, group them in this matrix, these are uh, four, um, the, um, four, four peta, okay, four squares, four square matrices, okay? And um, each matrix, look at like who uh, you can work in partnership, Okay, what are um, who are those that develop interest or capacity? But at the moment, um, it's like um, they have low interest. But you are really you really want to engage with them. Okay, put them in order. And then who are the challenges? Um, the challenges ones uh, that you need more time to spend on. So when you do this uh, systematically, you try to minimize you know like minimize your effort, but max maximize the result. Okay, so um, pardon me if I'm being very um, systematic in this um, because my background is actually uh, applied statistics. So being a statistician, um, we will do this kind of analysis. All right. So we prioritize uh, which one because you have a limited time frame when you are doing a research. Uh, maybe you have a two or a three years project, but you want to show some impact as well when you do this engagement. So that is where you group your stakeholders, okay, in category. Um, who should you approach first? Okay. All right. So key principles. Do what you say, okay, and you are going to do. Okay, follow that and try to make sure that there is no surprises for the in uh for whoever uh stakeholders that you are going to have. Okay, create a business uh relationship mutually beneficial. So, um, whatever relationship that you want to build, it has to be mutual beneficial. Say, for example, if you want to engage with external stakeholders, right, what do they get or what, what is the benefit for them if they, they collaborate with you, if they partner with you, right? And of course, from your side, um, why should you reach out to them? Uh, what, is the, what is the benefit as well? What is the um uh what what is the thing that you need from them okay so this is actually a principle when building the relationship so you remember the question that i asked just now earlier these questions so what's the common objective and um what do you need from them and what they need from you okay and remember Executives and customers are always people. Always show respect. Um, so that that's basically the principle. Okay. And um, stakeholder engagement, you use them as a participant in the collaborative uh, decision making process that guide the creation and execution of a defined scope of work. All right. So these are the process flow um, of engagement with stakeholders where you plan, you understand, you have internal preparation and alignment, you build the trust, the consult, uh, consultation, respond, implement, and so forth. And finally, monitor and documentation. So the engagement approaches, uh, this slide, I think I will share, if not mistaken, I, I should have uh, shared in the PDF, uh, later they will uh, send to you as well. Okay, so um, this is actually like looking at the pyramid, so the stakeholder engagement, which of uh, them, if there is like greater effort needed and you don't need that much, um, that much uh, stakeholder. Okay. Here, the pool communication is one way engagement. So this pool, uh, a lot of people, you want to create awareness. So the approach that you are going for is a pool communication. Information is being made available. Okay, maybe you choose whether to engage with uh, like websites or construction holdings and so forth. Okay. So similarly, um, I just choose a few. If the stakeholder is showing high influence and high interest, you do a partnership. Okay, you share the accountability and responsibility, and this partnership shall be two-way engagement. 
there is joint learning, decision making, and action. So usually when you do a partnership, say for example, if you are having a research collaboration with industry partners, so you will form a partnership with the industry, you will have agreements, like collaborative agreements signed, and in the agreement itself, it states like what is the uh, accountability, what is the responsibility um, by both parties and so forth. Yeah. Okay, so that is the few um, engagement approaches. There are five here. Okay. Then, if you want to go fast, you can go alone. But if you want to go far, go together, go in a group, do collaborative uh, partnership. Okay, so these are what we have a recap of what we have learned for these past two days, six hours. So usually what I do, right, for the training, right, I will have like one whole day of training. Um, but now we break into two days so that it won't be too um, Microsoft team exhaustive or fatigue for you. Okay, and for my, myself as well. All right, um, so what we have learned, the visibility, um, then we have learned about um, the repository, open access, and then identity is where your researcher profile you know, you learn about the ORCID, you learn about Pablons, and then the conversation is this morning, um, earlier this morning, where we talk about the communication, science, uh, research communication, and so forth. Okay, so impact is achieved through effective communication and also working closely with stakeholders. With only with uh, these two, achieve your impact. Now, um, remember uh, yesterday when you do your pre-test, you still have your pre-test uh, shared with you, okay? At the start of um, the test, uh, I mean the, the session, the, the training, uh, there are 10, 10 questions of pre-test. So can you fill up the post-test? And because uh, we don't have, like, um, after this, right, it will be, um, the session is done. So uh, what I will do is I will create a folder in the Microsoft team uh, for the pre post test and please upload your okay with your please you want to rename your folder is also possible yeah okay so that's it and yep 12 p.m we are done all right any question you would like to ask Any question from the floor? Everyone okay? Hello? Everyone okay? Okay, all right. <clears throat> okay, so um, I will the folder here for you to upload. Um, okay, so you can just upload. Upload your um, okay. So here's the pre post test. Please upload your document in this folder. Yeah, ah, uh, not allowed. Survey form, some part of it cannot be written already. Okay, I didn't realize that. Um, perhaps you can just uh, use like um. I'm not sure if you you mean you cannot type or anything.
Ah, all right. Um, <clears throat> from six onwards, is it? Um, okay, all right. Uh, the, the, that one is not the survey form. It's actually the pre-post pre test. So the pre-post test, hold on, yeah. Uh, okay, let me open. Right, yesterday uh, there is also um, also a, um, inquiry about this uh, from six onwards that uh, some of you can um, can write. So what you can do is you can just use highlighter and highlight. Okay, you can highlight what uh, what's your uh, you just use the highlighter. Do two colors, yellow color, and also uh, maybe you can choose like what is your pre um, during the pre test color and the post test color. Okay, because six onwards, six until number ten is all uh, multi uh, optional um, questions, so you can just use the highlighter. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Any other questions? All right. If not, um, I'll see you around. Okay. Say goodbye to everyone. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining. And I hope to see you again um, in the near future. All right. Anything you can, uh, if you want to ask uh, further or you have some, um, some queries or anything, you can drop me an email. All right. Thank you. Okay. And all the best, all the best for your research. I hope you learned something for these uh, two days, the six hours trainings. All right. Okay. So thank you and uh, have a good day ahead. Thank All right. You. Bye.